15 oh, years. Oh, that's like... Starbucks. Damn, you got shit. a Zippo? That's some rich shit. No. I, these motherfuckers got the are fucking... Are we recording? Zip- we are? These motherfuckers got the fucking Zippos. Look at him. He looks... Dude, maniacal. Zippos are the best. When I was a kid, I used to have to go to the fucking uh, Pennsylvania to see my dad in prison, and it was right next to the fucking Zippo plant where they, like, made the Zippos or, like, they at least had, like, a museum of the Zippos, and it was right <laughs> near the prison. So my mom would, like, be like, yes, we have to, like, go on this long-ass drive to go to a prison, but you get to go get a Zippo. I still can't use a Zippo. I almost burnt my house down, like, the other day. Really? How the fuck do you do that? Why? Because the flame doesn't stop unless it, you close it? Didn't it didn't stop. I didn't know that. And I lit the bitch, and I was smoking, and I dropped it, the uh, lighter, and it kept burning. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah. Do you have, like, a big can of, like, gas that you put into it now? Or do you just mm. use it? Like, the little, we got little butane. Yeah. Little butane fillers. There's a lot of smoke it's in like the house. It's like a party pack. Everybody has their own personal lighter. When you know? I... When I uh, Went to the Internet Money House the most recent time. There's definitely a lot, a lot of weed smoking going on. And you guys are examining the like finer things that you can do with weed smoking. I guess like you can get a real fancy lighter. I guess. No chain today. No chain. I don't wear jewelry like that no more. Why? You're over it. I don't do anything. I don't even do interviews no more. I put this on this morning, bro. When I got shower, I was like, I gotta leave the house today. I was like, okay, not no jewelry, but no, no chains. But I don't, I don't wear like chains and shit no more. What? You just over it? You just wanna be a normal guy? Yeah. That's how I feel, too. I got weirded out, bro. Really? Why, you got robbed? No, never, bro. You <laughs> no? see me, bro. You know what time it is. Well, you know, I don't know what time it is. You, you know got the how many on you? people I go with, bro. But you you're here with one dude, and I don't even see Yeah, because you said bring one person. Well, he's not wearing a on bullet flyer, belt or anything. It's not like it's I not know that he's I, strapped up. Bro, I know I'm not going anywhere but here, and mm. I know there's no one here. There's no one here. It's true. Or else I'll just call the CDC on y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Get y'all no, this, is a, this is a high security environment. <laughs> Let we, me find out. Josh has a machine. He's gonna, he gonna book me for an interview and I get here and there's people here to fucking stomp me out. No, that doesn't happen. I'm shutting you here. I'm shutting you down so quick. Not in the valley. And who who would want to do that to Taz though? You really got smoke like that? Huh? You really got smoke with anybody like that? Like do, no. you, do you have like any cartels after you? Anything? No. No. Oh. That shit don't happen in the beat making world, bro. I haven't left my house since November, bro. Really, to be honest with you. Really, but as a producer, you don't really ever have to leave the house, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I got three studios in my house. That's why yeah. I moved in my new house in Encino. Right, but three studios all at the same time, cranking. Yeah. So, what's that like for you? Are you sort of scurrying between the three studios, just sort of seeing what's going on at any given time? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I got artists now to where I don't have. To hold their hand through everything. Mm. So like I, they are just like I'm fans of their music. Not saying I'm not fans of no one's music, but I'm fans of their music. So like I just give them the trust to go do whatever, and they just bring me cool shit. And I'm like, I just basically tell them to throw a bunch of shit at the wall. Mm. I'm like, and my job is to dictate what's good and bad because they're it's like it's like a mom with their kids. Like no one ever thinks their kids gonna be ugly. You know mm. what I mean? Right. But that's like them with their songs. They don't they don't know what songs are good. They don't know what songs are bad. And they depend on me to kind of guide them. It's kind of crazy because you have like a ability, unlike pretty much anybody I've ever met, to be able to see an artist at one stage in development and see the potential or see what they could become. Like, I've just seen you over the years. And, you know, it definitely seems like, you know, there's been plenty of stuff that didn't work out for one reason or another. But mm-hmm. you like it's kind of crazy the extent to which you can sort of i've seen you take artists who i was totally familiar with their music they were donating on live stream and shit and mm-hmm. then a couple months later i realized that taz taylor signed them and all of a sudden they're like a lot better like you saw the potential in them like you really have the ability to sort of spot that i don't think that i'm different in that way i don't look at it like that mm. i look at it like I'm just a normal person in this shit. And everybody else is so busy overthinking everything. And I don't overthink anything at all. Mm -hmm. I just let shit play out. And I got a really good team of people around me who um, we just all work well, good together. There's no problem. So you're actually satisfied with the the state of affairs right now? Because there was a while where, you know, Taz Taylor was the guy who was angry as fuck at the label and was was not happy with a lot of things going on around him. You seem a little mellowed out. Um, I just think it all has to go go back to like 
What? What can I say? What can't I say? You can say whatever. This is like being with a therapist. Nothing you can say here will, will violate any uh, NDAs or, or federal <laughs> laws. <laughs> I was just in a bad situation. Uh huh. And for a lot of times, I couldn't speak on shit because of who I was in business with or who I was signed to, mm-hmm. like label shit. Like I was getting told to like delete my fucking Twitter and delete my Instagram. Okay, so they really didn't like you being argumentative on Twitter? Nah. But I don't I don't do it to be argumentative. I, I do it just because, like... You <sighs> hadn't really seen the downside of Nah, I've definitely seen arguments? the fucking downside, bro. Like, I've seen a bunch of shit. Uh-huh. I've le- there's people who literally, like, associate me with who the fuck they think I am. Whenever they retweets, they don't know who I am as a person. Uh-huh. They don't really hear, like, my tone of voice. Right. And they don't really know, like the whole story and you can't really fit the whole story because it's probably wrapped up in some personal shit Mm -hmm. that doesn't need to be fucking public and on top of that it's too much to fit in 140 fucking characters bro okay but was your alamo deal something that you were genuinely excited about and then it went bad or do you feel like when you got into that deal you just didn't really know what was going on with the industry and you signed a deal that you weren't happy with what was that no i don't blame i don't blame it's not like i signed a deal i was unhappy with it said i knew what what i was getting into deal wise and you do that as a music producer you do that as someone in the industry like i signed a pub deal with apg August 31st, 2017. Right. I had a I was talking about getting my own label 6 months later than that. Mm-hmm. Nobody comes in the industry that quick and gets a label that fast. Mm-hmm. It's just a bunch of shit went off in between that time. Mm-hmm. So it's like I knew what I was getting into whenever I did the deal. It's just that me and they they didn't understand that like my business and my shit how it goes is like I do more than what I'm supposed to do. I do more as a producer, I do more as a Label executive, I like live with these kids, bro. I stay with these kids every day. I see them. I'm heavily involved in their life. I know what goes on in their personal lives. Mm. I try to do what's best to look out for them. I bring a lot of them out here when they don't have anything. You know what I mean? Like they'll be working at Walmart. They'll be doing whatever. I bring them out here. I give them a place to live. I don't charge them anything. I give them beats. We record music. Mm. I pay studio time. I buy them clothes. I do a lot of shit. Then it's not like I'm expecting anything from this. It's like. I see the I see what they could be, and I'm like helping with that. But so you felt like the label didn't understand the extent to which you exactly were... they didn't understand how I worked. Mm. So with them, it was just like they wanted to be their show and about them and their whole thing. I signed Trevor with them. Mm-hmm. I took Fall in to get like 10 million streams, 15 million streams on its own with no help. Uh huh. They even label shit. They even uploaded. He didn't even get New Music Friday as an artist thing. And I would, like, Trevor would tell people right now, it was one of the only people who was really fighting for Trevor. Uh-huh. And it's just like, but they don't really understand the dynamic. The shit never worked out because of my personality, how I am. And I tell people how I feel, and I don't kiss nobody's ass. Uh-huh. And they wanted me to kiss their ass and basically, like, <sighs> smile while I do it. Uh-huh. Wipe my fucking cheek off. So you felt disrespected by Alamo in general, and you felt like... Yeah, but I mean, I've squashed that shit since okay. then, because I'm in a better position to where, like, I got a good partner who mm-hmm. understands, and he understands how it works, and, like, I'm not, I'm not, like, traditional people don't... I kind of... Someone told me this yesterday. They said I move how executives move in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm very, like, I'm very brash. I'm very upfront, and, like... I fight for my team. I fight for my people. And I don't like back down for anything or anybody. And I went to wars with labels. I went to wars with artists. I went to wars with everything over making sure that like at the end of the day, like the intentions of shit, just business was done correctly. You mm. know what I mean? Right. So how hard was it for you to get out of that deal? Because I remember at one point the word on the street was like Taz did. Like at first the word on the street was like, Taz Taylor has a publishing deal with APG and a label with Alamo at the same time. And people thought that was kind of crazy that you signed both of those deals in a short period of time. And then it's like, oh, no, Taz has a deal. It signed uh, Ian Dior to 10K projects while he has a label deal with Alamo. And people were like, wow, that's really bugged out. Is that how that happened? No, it's not how it happened. (laughs) 
You're trying to get me caught up. That's what here, I. That's what. That's the word that on the not, street. That's that what we do here. We just repeat rumors that we heard. That is not how it happened. Okay. I'm a fucking Keemstar. <laughs> but that is not what happened. Okay. It wasn't like that. No, bro. So the Alamo shit was just a whole different thing, bro. Like it was a lot of the shit they wanted me to do. I really didn't fuck with like their vision on shit. The shit they wanted me to sign, bro. Like I remember. I remember one day, bro. I'm getting a phone call, and this is after, like, I haven't talked to them in a couple of days because we just got done yelling at each other, and this is the first time I talked to them. Uh-huh. And they call me, and they're like, hey. I'm like, what's up? I'm like, they're like, you should sign Tiny Meat Gang. I'm like, the the YouTubers, bro? Like, like come on, bro. Like, is this a joke? Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's no disrespect to them, but it's just like, that's how I felt like they were taking my shit. Like, it wasn't serious. Right. And I like, this music, this music shit's the most serious thing to me. Right. So... Don't play with it. Yeah, you can't just tell me to do some shit like that. No, I mean, that was my experience with uh, the label that I was signed with, too, is that, like, they tried to get me to sign Skinny from the Nine. They tried to get me to sign a whole bunch of artists I that, that I didn't like. And meanwhile, I said, no, I want to sign Draco the Ruler. And they said, no. And, I mean, I kind of get that because Draco's been in jail ever <laughs> since. <laughs> so I guess, like, maybe not the worst idea on their part. But... You know, it's like for people like us, like it's going to be hard to work within that system. Like when you look at the A&Rs who work at labels, they got to just like swallow their pride and suck it up and take yeah, a bunch of not, shit all the, the time. It's not about the A&Rs ever. It's like they're yeah. pretty much just a middleman. But then, you can like, get a you can get an A&R excited on somebody and nothing happens. Right. But like for, for you, you know, you're somebody who like you're just used to like doing your own stuff. And like you just want a label who's going to support you and help you with that. Meanwhile, like, you know. If they're trying to like really tell you what to do, it's just not gonna fly, right? I don't see you as that. Kind I don't. Of I don't think. It, I don't think it's like if you approach it as like we're trying to tell you to do something and you better do this or fucking else, mm. then it's a problem. But if you come to me like Taz, I'm advising you. I think this is a good idea. You should do this or we should do this. It's all about. It's not about what you say. It's about how you say it. Mm. That's true. Yeah. A lot Put of people. Only thing I want is just like respect, and I give people respect as it's given to me. Like I'm a like firm believer that if you come to me and you're cool, I'll be cool with you. I'm very respectful. The man, I feel like that you're playing with me, or is disrespectful. Then it's, it's all games are off. Like I threatened to drive my fucking G wagon through people's front office. <laughs> in in the industry, I really have. Right. But it's like <laughs> it all comes to back just like playing with me. Like don't fucking play with me. Uh huh. Where, where I come from and the shit I grew up around. And the shit, like, I had to work 10 times harder than everybody else to get here because I dropped down to seventh grade because I didn't, like, I come from a small ass city of Jacksonville. Uh There ain't shit happening in Jacksonville. Right. If y'all knew the background of my family history and the shit that goes on, the shit I had to come from is just, like, colossal. Uh There's no hope. Right. So it's like, I just want respect from people. Mm. I feel like I've done enough at this point to get respect. And that's not me being cocky or me being egotistical because I don't wear chains for that reason. I don't want people to come off cocky or egotistical to people. I'm a very, like, conversational person. I'll talk to people mm. about shit. I just want people to see my side of it. But So you're totally satisfied with your situation with Elliot now? How does that work? Like, do you just bring him new artists all the time? And, like, how much of the decision to sign somebody is yours versus yours and his collectively? Elliot is... But for those of people who don't know, Elliot is 10K Projects. That is my business partner. And I do artists do 10K Projects with Elliot Grange. Mm-hmm. I'm not signed to 10K Projects. It's not like that. So you don't have like a label deal per I mean, se? I have, I have, a, I have a agreement with Elliot. And if I wanted to, I could take artists to there. We have a label under 10K, but I'm not signed to him like that. Mm. It's like a partnership. But so if you met an artist tomorrow and Elliot was like, no, I don't, I don't even, to- no, no, no. It's never been like that. Elliot's literally told me I can go sign right. a, a, a five-year-old kid or a 40-year-old woman who's like has no arms and no legs. He don't care. Oh, I love you know that. what I mean? Yeah. He's just saying that like he believes in me so much. And what he literally calls it the Taz show. That's what he says. He's like, this is the Taz show. We got to let Taz do whatever he wants. And like, I'm not saying I'm fucking Kobe Bryant out here with this shit. Cause I'm not, I, I shoot shots and they miss like. That happens. Everybody misses. But right. I feel like he feels like I'm going to be right more than I'm wrong. Right. And you just take those those risks. You know what I mean? So with the Trevor Daniel situation, 
is that just in your mind is is that just something that you're just not going to be involved with now because he's still stuck being signed to Alamo or what's going on with him? He got he's a, like Interscope. Oh, okay. He's so Interscope. He so deal. no, no, no. Like if you know Alamo is a label oh, right. of Interscope, yeah. so they're still involved and that's all cool. Like I talked to Trevor whenever Trevor dropped his album. Me and Trevor texted each other and I think it was just like a weird thing because I had to buy out of my deal with a label where I signed him there. Uh huh. So it's just like he probably felt abandoned in a way, uh -huh. but it's just like. That's definitely like the narrative that some people online try to spin, right? Yeah, but it was never like that. And Trevor's never looked at it like that. Mm. Because the problem is, is just like, whenever I bought out, Falling wasn't doing its its thing. It was doing like 145,000 streams a day on Spotify, which is really good for an artist. Mm -hmm. but I'm talking about it wasn't like the 2 million streams a day it was doing. It wasn't like a big ass record. Mm -hmm. After I left and bought out my, my deal and everything, that's whenever the TikTok went crazy and blew it the fuck up. So I think just, I don't want, just re being the type of person I am, I don't want people to think like I'm like trying to take credit for that. I know what I did on that record and Trevor knows what I did on that record. And it's one of the best records that come out. It was like the uh, chart came out today. It was like ninth most streamed song of the year. Mm. But it's like, I know what I did on that record. He knows what he did on that record. We know what they didn't do on that record. So I don't really need to like try to stand on his shoulders and trying to act tall right now. I'll right. let him have the shine and do his thing. Like he's a talented artist. When you have an artist signed now versus when you first started your career, do you get less attached to them now because you've seen it go bad a bunch of times? You've sort of just had I mean, relationships what is, slowly fizzle what out. Is a, what is bad? Um, you know, you've had situations that clearly just didn't work out where you ended up hating the person or where they nah, ended up I mean, not I feel like you. at the end of the day, I, bring, I give people opportunity. Right. And may, like people may slack on that because I do give and I'm the first person to like kind of exchange some, you know, I've given you an opportunity to come out here and like not just change your life, but change your family's life. And the only thing I require is just people to work hard and understand, like, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm like a football coach. And whenever you fuck up, I'm going to expect you to come do fucking suicides in my fucking, <laughs> not literally, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to bust that ass whenever you don't do what the fuck you're supposed to be doing. Mm. Like, and I... That's the reason why a lot of people are successful. Go go look, go ask Trevor. Trevor wouldn't be where he is right now if I didn't get on to him like that. Not not like beating, like fucking abusing creative people, but it's just like like a coach, bro. Like you want the best for them and you they got to understand what they need to be doing that's right. But do you deal with a lot of people who really aren't used to being talked to in that kind of way or aren't used to having somebody really try to like instill yeah. a work ethic in them? No, nah, yeah, there's there's definitely this type of people. It works on certain people that don't. I think, bro, like whenever I was on the internet, before I even jumped to the industry, I was going crazy on fucking, fucking Kanye to the Periscope, bro. I was on right. Periscope, Periscope with a fucking AR-15 just going crazy. I think people know what they get when they're fucking with me. And like, I'm crazy, but I'm passionate about the shit. Mm. I just want people who's also has that same passion for it. Do you get banned from Kanye to the? I got banned from Kanye to I docked somebody. <laughs> I was a troll, bro. My what? dad left me when I was fucking three. He came back, gave me a computer when I was like eight or nine. Uh -huh. I would sit on fucking like 4chan all day, bro. Right. From like then to now. Just a little edgelord. Yeah, just crazy. Like not not really diving in the deep web, but you know, skimming my toe. Okay. So you, <laughs> what, what, were you, what were you checking out on the dark web? Your TJ I mean, bro, if, uh, no, <laughs> bro. No, I'm not. Nah, but no. you are on. <laughs> the red room? You hit a red bro, room? I'm just saying you go on there, You it leads to other shit. You know what I mean? I've heard. It's like the gateway. 4 chance like the gateway. On there. You ever see a horse have sex with someone? I mean, bro, you, I've been on the internet for 20 fucking years. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I don't I don't look it up. I think but I might have see seen like shit. a quick little like gif of it happening. No, nah, you see the shit when you scroll on like message boards or forums and shit. I'm right. very deep. No, I, didn't, yeah. it's, I dropped out, me. so that was the way I learned about life was through the internet. Mm. Yeah, it scarred me. One time I saw a dick in a cat's mouth. And it just I still like I do kinda, not I kinda can't get it out of my head after all these years. So really, you still be thinking about <laughs> that was like fifteen years ago. What? And I still like it just yeah, really yeah. like it was the kind of thing where you're scrolling through a message board and you just see like somebody like bomb the board with like crazy shit. You How know? many times a year do you think about this? A couple times a year. I want you to think about the, don't worry about what they gotta that, say. Maybe this that's is why like I'm so close with my session. cat now. It's cause Listen, I've seen man. what a cat's life could be like. <laughs> That's my standard for a cat. Don't you're gonna get shut down by Peter, bro. They should be applauding me. 
Why? Because I'm not fucking my cat. You're just promoting it. No, no, no. no. I'm totally against it. Now people are going to go <laughs> look this shit up. I'm taking a stand against it, dude. You're taking a stand? I'm 100% anti-cat I think cat you're fucking. informing people on it. I mean, I was just doing an interview with China Mac, and at one point, he's he's raging into the camera being like, if you attack an old person in public, you are a bitch. And I'm just sort of thinking like, yes, like I am 100% anti-attacking elderly people yeah. in public, but... My man is... He's, he's very passionate, he's passionate about passionate. it. You got to respect the passion. <laughs> you know, because, okay, when I think about my life, um, I spent years and years as basically like a dude having a BMX house where I would have fucking eight BMX dudes who are, you know, 18 to mid-20s roughly with me all the time. We're going out in the van every day riding bikes, getting footage. That was just my life. And that's why I was good at running that kind of brand is because I was so up close and personal with what was going on in that world. And when I look at you, I see you as being 100% the same thing where it's like, you're successful because you actually live this shit 100%. A lot of people try to like, you know, go home and have a normal life and then they like come into work and they start fucking with the music and stuff. You being there and like actually being down to be in the studio environment every night, all night is, I mean, you've been in the studio, man. It's a lot of work, yeah. Especially to keep artists happy and you know, you never know what the fuck people are doing mm. in their own time. I was talking to Ty Fontaine on here the other Ty day. Fontaine. Ty Fontaine. And he struck me as somebody who seems like a very good match for you because he was just describing like being in the studio working on music for months and months and he did not seem like he minded at all. He was like the, 100% Yeah, down. the thing with him is I don't have to tell Ty to do anything. Right. Ty just pulls up. I'm out back. I'm, I'm kicking it, catching a vibe. He pulls up. And he'll just go do 10 songs. And right. he'll just pop out when he's done. And he'll smoke and we'll just kick it. But that's like, it's good. And I just go through and I'm like, all right, cool. We get 10 songs. He already knows how it works. I'm going to look at this shit like, boom, take seven of them. Mm. We'll keep three for something else. But, but when but, you first brought him in, how much coaching were you really doing in terms of like, like, cause I, I knew that his music was solid, but I then saw him start working with you. And all of a sudden his shit got like really good. Like his new project, I was crazy impressed when I listened to that. It was, I don't think I like taught him how to make music. He was like doing that. There's definitely been cases where I had to do that. The thing with him is he's just, he can do everything every rapper does better than every other rapper. Mm. So it's like, I literally just speak to him. I think, I think for the longest time, the coaching wasn't with music shit. I think it was just like him being around and seeing how we move and how we work and like how shit goes and kind of like, our standard you know mm. what i mean and like how he's seen people come in get fucking chewed out because they don't want to work and i gotta i gotta basically be the artist for him or people that don't want to be a fucking artist mm. like i can't want it more than you want it right but he was there through all that whenever he wasn't getting studio time it's the artists don't want to show up to it he's up in there and he fucking does four songs while they show up and it was a fucking hassle for them to get there right. and they maybe do one song you got to really be willing to work your ass off in that environment. And he that, sacrifices yeah. a lot. Mm. Yeah. He was living in my garage, bro. Right. Literally living in my garage, going to bed, doing 10 songs a night for two months straight but until you, now. You ever have any like crazy shit happen from having like a dozen fucking young men living in your house? Like anything could happen, right? Like I was asking Ty, like, do girls come through and does it ever get crazy? And he's like, oh, no, nah, because we only bring girls that are respectful and, and what? know what's going on. And I'm like, I'm like, there's no way that you could know beforehand. Like some of the craziest girls I ever met in my life seemed totally normal when I first met them. Uh, yeah, females do be coming in there and I'm like, <laughs> they're in my, they're in my house. Crazy shit do be going on. And it's my job to be everybody's goddamn stepdaddy. Right. So how often do you have to like get involved and like really tell somebody like, yo, this girl can't come around. No, no, no. She's bad. For never you. like that. No, not like that. No. Nah. It's advice. It's not like an order. Uh, uh, nah, it's never even. I don't never tell them do or don't uh-huh. because I don't get involved in people's like situations. If they feel confident enough, like think about it, bro. Big ass house full of people. There's producers in here ages from 28 to 17, right? Mm. In this house working. If you feel confident enough with a girl to bring her around 12 other guys, it must be something serious, bro. You mm. know what I mean? You just ain't bringing no random girls to the, to the house. Mm. I, that shit, like, 
12 producers though because i've definitely brought girls around like a bunch of rappers and then realized pretty quickly that it wasn't a good idea <laughs> no i got rappers in the house all the time oh okay you got rappers too i okay. got ra- yeah you're right Those yeah bro sense, like yeah. people be coming to the house tega be coming to the house a lot of people be coming to the house like it's like i don't know i just don't mix the two and mm. i just i just give people advice if they ask for it right. that's all i do if they come to me and they're like so and so happened or this is not happened how should i handle it and i'll give them my advice on it because i'm i'm 27 years old so it's like you know, right. I could offer him a little bit of advice. Do you, could you ever see yourself, or do you, do you have your own space that you can sort of retreat to, or do you <laughs> you're, you're dedicated to just living in that environment? Do you ever feel like you need space? But uh, yeah, but nah, I can't. The minute I the minute I step away from this shit and I don't move how I move and do what I do, there's a lot of people who's like depending on it. Mm. So it's like I feel like as I've let go of like, I don't want to say the word control. I don't want to say that because that's like a very overpowering word. But as I've let go of like the reins, right? And let other people kind of delegate and do their jobs. Shit just got fucked up. Right. Because like at the end of the day, like if I'm signing an artist, it's because I'm passionate about them. If I'm signing a producer, it's because I'm passionate about them. I have a vision for them and they understand that vision and we're moving together on it. My job is I ain't got to get everybody else in order. Me and this artist have something that we're trying to get done. You right. know what I mean? And I ain't got time spending two weeks trying to get people excited about new artists. Mm, definitely. I mean, it's just sort of like, it's it's a crazy lifestyle that you sort of carved out for yourself because of the fact that you become like really close and like super good friends with these people, but knowing that there might be a shelf life on this relationship. Like, is it ever like a kind of thing where you start working with an artist and then they just, and they want to be recording every day, every day, but then eventually you're just kind of like, you know what? <laughs> maybe I was wrong. Maybe maybe your career is not going to turn into anything. I got to you got to you got to get out of here. I think it just gets to a point where once I'm giving more than I'm getting in terms of like if I'm the one waking up every day telling you what you should be doing mm. in terms of like the music you should be making, if I'm telling you to do fucking TikToks and trailers and maybe hey bro go go get go pick out an outfit, go do a post for Instagram, go do shit like that. If I'm having to do that to a over excessive amount and I'm basically it's like a fucking Sims character bro mm. I gotta click and tell you when to go fucking piss go do all that I'm not interested now I'll just tell you to go on somewhere but what if their music is like really good what if they're really capable if they're like the next Trippy Red but like you know Trippy Red is like curating his own existence on Instagram if he's like really good musically but you have to do all that work for him I think everything is just about a conversation if people are open to being not like if they're open to the situation and they know they're getting into it and they're not money. Mm. If they want my advice and they want my help and they want all that shit, cool. It's not like always you better do this and this needs to get done or fucking else. It's always just like they know I'm the one person who's always going to keep it real with them. Mm. No matter what, if I don't like something, I'll say I don't like it. And they respect that. And not every artist is easy to work with. There's a lot of artists who are very hard to work with. And that's kind of what makes this job grueling mm. is the fact that there is difficult artists to work with. But you got to work with them. But in terms of who lives with you, are you at this point just committed to like really only working with artists that you fuck with, that you respect, that you like the way that they act towards you? Because a lot of times you might find somebody who's a really amazing artist, but they're a fucking asshole and living with them is just impossible. No, I don't require everybody to live with me and internet money. I got artists right. signed to me that I just see they come out here and they work like two rays in Philadelphia has a big song going crazy right now called like Big Dripper. I don't have, like, uh, that much of a relationship with him. He goes and does his thing. Whenever he comes out to L.A., like, we work, and it's my job to handle the music on that. Mm. But it's not like he's living with me where I'm like, all right, bro, you're not fucking putting the toilet seat down. Like, all right, bro, get it together. You know what (laughs) I mean? You could, like, deal with people in different capacities. Yeah, every situation is different. And, like, I think it all depends on just everybody's attitude. Like I said, it all goes back to, like, just being up front and being honest. Right. But how much do you feel the need to get involved in the, the promotional stuff like that? Like telling somebody to make a TikTok or, or like, you know. But you'd be amazed. What? So you, you get all up in it? You're, I, you're, you, you that's like, that's like promotional routines? tools now as a label. Right. But do you come up with the dance routines for these no. songs ever? No. Okay. No. I sit back with a camera and watch and laugh. And you watch the kids come up with it, right? Yeah. Come on, man. Why you make it seem weird, man? I'm like, not I'm, gonna I'm dance over here on TikTok. watching the kids do it. <laughs> come on, bro. Nah, bro. I'm just saying, pe- my girl's always First like, all, oh, these let's are not dance kids, on TikTok. Bro. I'm like, no. These are not kids. I am a 27 year old man. These kids are, Ty is 20. Okay. Spirit's 20. Alec is 19. 19. Mm. These, like, 
they're young men. Okay, but when does it become weird? Because I definitely went through that where I was like a 24 year old dude with like a house think I'm with like, like a whole <laughs> shitload of BMX dudes sleeping on the floor, and then one day I'm like 33, and I'm like, oh wow, this this doesn't feel the same, or people might not perceive this as the same as when I was 10 years younger. Nah, I don't think of it like that. It's kind of weird. It might come around eventually. I've never thought about it like that. Really? Never. I've never been like, all right, this is getting kind of weird. Right. Because it's not like I'm. The commenters will let you know when they start thinking it's weird. Because I mean, I'm not going to be like fucking Hugh Hefner with a fucking <laughs> slew of Playboy producer bunnies fucking right. running around the goddamn house. Nah, bro. Like, I think I had to do it like this because I'm kind of teaching these people how to be like, I'm mm-hmm. like a, a father figure to a lot of these people, bro. Right. And I don't mean that in like a weird way, like a real, like I'm a lot of people in our money. We didn't have dads and shit growing up. So there's people in our money, the older people who like. We're kind of that for a lot of people. Right. We're no, kind of, like, I just feel like safe. It's safe. A lot of people online, it's it's weird how there's that impulse to make it like a creepy thing if you're like around dudes who are younger than you. But it's like, why does it have to be a creepy thing? From my perspective, there's a lot of BMX riders that used to fucking sleep on my couch that will tell you that I had a huge role in them basically like figuring out what the fuck to do with their lives. I mean, lives. how old is like the phase people? Yeah, yeah. No, well, I don't know how old Faze Banks is. I, be I've been around 30. her, and they're doing, like, crazier shit than I'm doing. Shit that's, like... Yeah. And the Fortnite You know what I mean? Like, I'm just in a house making music, bro. I'm not doing nothing weird. I'm not Fortnite running around doing challenges or pranks. Like 14 killing it. And also, yeah, they have crazy-ass parties with, like, alcohol and rappers. And I don't do that. Yeah. I used to have the L.A. parties. I used to be hip until you got to clean up them L.A. fucking parties. Mm. And ain't no one there to do them motherfucking things. Right. And then you just like, man, fuck this shit. Right. I don't do that shit, bro. We just work on music. There ain't no weird shit. No one ever thought about it like some weird shit. Mm, this is the first time anyone's ever thought about it like some weird shit. I'm going to be real with you, bro. No one's ever told me like, Taz, you're 27 years old. It's getting time. No, I'm telling you what you're <laughs> in for as a dude because I remember when nobody thought it was weird that I was driving around in a van every day with a bunch of BMX dudes. And then I remember like seeing it slowly become like people are like, why are you sitting at this rail at this high school? And I was like, well... I mean, I've been doing this since I was like 15. Nah, I haven't been doing this like long now. Because yeah. you just got to understand my story, bro. Where the fuck I come from. Mm. And all that shit. Like my situation. I was with, I have a five-year-old son. Mm. I have a baby mama. You know what I mean? I was in a relationship. And I left that shit to come out here and do this shit. Because I couldn't be able to do it from Florida. Mm. So it's not like I was always going through the years. Like I'm some eighth grade senior fucking college dropout or something. Like... Mm. Let's go, still get the party going. Nah, bro. Just like I came out here, there's a lot of people who leave other situations that they got going on. Mm. And we just sacrifice, bro. Like, we don't, you think I want to be in a house with a bunch of men 24 7, bro? Like, hell nah, the shit stinks all the fucking time. You got people, because there's different levels and shit. People got different backgrounds. You don't know how people were raised. Like, I know being in my, my house with my mom, if I would have left the cup out or do this shit, my mom beating me with a fucking mm. whatnot. There was a dude who slept on my floor for maybe a weekend or two and his feet smelled so bad have you had any like stinky feet like he had a blanket no. shout out tammy <laughs> shout out tammy mccarley he, his feet smelled tammy so bad we had to blast. get rid of this blanket because he slept using it and his feet smelled so bad i'm sure his feet are totally fine now have you had any bad feet smell issues or any like real bad hygiene i don't know if stuff? you see me bro but i'm not getting down low enough to smell anybody's feet you didn't have to get low at all. It was, it was. I mean, eyeball then that's height. a that's, that's a PP through. with y'all and y'all homeboy. I didn't get close to the feet. Can if you, you can smell his feet, I'm telling you, bro. then that's a problem. I'm telling you, you that's like a that's like, like a doctor problem. Yeah. What is no, that? There definitely should have been Bunions medical or professionals something? involved for sure. That's crazy. Um. Okay, but, but no, I don't deal with I don't deal with stinky feet. And if there's something going on, the most I deal with is like, all right, bro, can y'all fucking wash y'all's goddamn dishes? Right. All right, all right bro, because y'all take the fucking trash out. Little shit like that. I'm sure you deal with in the same place. Oh, I used to deal with that so bad. I mean, I, I would have dudes that were living with me that, like, I would walk into their room, and the windows would be all open. There'd be, like, 50 to 100 beer cans open. Shout out, Stevie. And there would be flies everywhere just over the... Fl- I would just start losing my mind. I'm like, I just woke up. It's, like, 8 in the morning. I'm grabbing the beer cans, losing it. At least you don't you don't have a lot of like drinkers at the house for the most part, I would assume. Nah. Bro, these kids are good kids, bro. Right. The most they do is just some will smoke weed if that's their fancy, if that's what they want to do. Mm. But 
they're of age to smoke weed. Right. But it's weird because now everybody like if you're in your position and if you were to like know that people that lived with you were popping pills and shit, it's like you'd be putting exposing yourself to a lot of liability. Aside from the fact that, you know, people who are on pills are just annoying. There's as fuck. no listen, bro, I grew up around nothing but addiction. Mm. I seen I seen my aunt swallow fucking thirty somas at one time, like overdosing out the mouth, fucking foaming hot Cheetos and shit. Mm. Like I don't I don't I don't do addiction. I don't fuck with people. They do addiction. And the craziest thing is, like, these questions you're, like, trying to beat around and ask around about, like, why I don't fuck with certain people or why I don't like certain people has to do with addiction. Mm. I don't deal with that. So you, you're you comfortable kicking somebody out of your life? if they're... I'm 100% comfortable because at the end of the day, I can't want it for you. Mm. you dealt with this shit, bro. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. People, you've seen this fucking, like, drug addicts and shit, bro. Right. I've dealt with, I've dealt with too much shit in my life mm. to get another phone call. I've dealt with too much shit in my life to be woken up again. Mm. By someone asking for comment on something. Right. So it's like, I don't I don't fuck around with that shit. And if anybody in my life comes around with that shit, they're done. I cut them off. Mm. Because then they, I got to do this shit for my son. I got to do this shit for everybody. There's people on internet money that have kids mm -hmm. that rely on me to be able to push this shit forward for everybody so they can provide for their families. So mm. their families aren't looking at them like they're crazy. 26 years old, 25 years old, still trying to be a producer. Mm. Yeah, bitch, I got gold records. I got platinum records. Like, I still have people dealing with this every day on internet money. Mm -hmm. And I got to do what I do. I ain't got time to be fucked up off no pills or no bullshit out here. No lean. Mm -hmm. No, none of this is shit, bro. That shit goofy to me, bro. The, like, the lean and the pills and stuff, it only seems cute for so long. But, like, once you see people, like, really, like, itching, trying to get some fucking drank. Bro, I see it all the time in <laughs> fucking studio sessions, bro. It's not bro. cool. Yeah, it's not fun. I'd be in the studio and there'd be real motherfucking, like, addicts in there, bro. This shit be crazy. Uh -huh. Every drug that you can imagine I've had offered to me in a studio session. Mm -hmm. I don't, this is all I do. And I just recently started doing this. Mm. And if I didn't start smoking weed, I would have killed a couple people. Really? It helped you chill out a little bit? Yeah, bro. Mm. I used to be crazy. Like literally though, but that's because like I learned everything myself. Mm. I dropped down to seventh grade. I didn't go to high school and mingle with people and do all this shit. I just started selling beats on the internet to pay for my mom's cancer bills. Mm. And then I didn't ask to get here. So when people are coming to me crazy, I'm looking like I'm just doing what I got to do mm. to get to the next point. Definitely. What's what's good with Ian Dior? You guys fell out? I mean. What happened? It's just some business shit, bro. I don't hate nobody. At the end of the day, like, I did a lot of shit for them kids. And them kids have, like, I, we did shit together that, like, changed their lives forever mm -hmm. and changed my life forever. And it's just, like, I will never let people disrespect them, mm. even though me and them may not be on, like, the best terms. But that all comes back to, like, control shit. When you, know you know say what I mean? uh, them, you mean Stacy as well? Stacy, they're, like, kids to me, bro. Like, my kids. You know mm. what I mean? Like, they're going to fuck up. And, like, just like a kid of yours, you're going to... If someone f does something that you don't necessarily agree with, you're not going to kick them out your life. It's not fuck them, but it's like they got to go learn their lesson. They got to go do it on their own. But what was the situation in terms of uh, like the business situation? Like was he formally signed to you slash 10K or what happened? He signed to 10K. Yeah, he signed straight to 10K. He didn't sign to me. Mm. Signed to 10K. Why is that? Because I had a label deal. Oh, right, at that time. So I, I wasn't on the paperwork. I wasn't on shit. It just, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So that was what? I, it's just like, bro, like whenever you're at a label and literally like I'm, I take, for example, I take Alamo Records, Lil Tekka. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hey, bro, this is, I was one of the first people to believe in Tekka. This is why me and Tekka are so cool. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first people to believe in Tekka. And I was like, bro, you're talented. And I always told everybody day one, I was like, listen, bro, this kid, Drake's going to get on one of his records one day or something. Like, this kid is a star. Mm -hmm. He's a star. He's a massive star. I brought Tekka out here. Me and Tekka worked on everything. I remember playing them the day after. You know what? The craziest studio session I've ever had? Lil Tekka, the first studio session we did. We did Shots. We did Ransom. We did Somebody. We did Did It Again. We did uh, The Score. That was the craziest energy in the, the studio craziest session, studio really? session period. All those songs are gold. Yeah, gold or better, and in, in a three-hour session. Lil Tech is one of the artists that is one of the main things that made me look at you and be like, "Dude, Paz can fucking pick him." Because I wouldn't have been able to tell you that that Lil Tech was going to be as big as he was, and you saw it super early. He's just a good person. Mm. 
And I just I fuck with his energy. Right. And he's my like aside from the music shit, like yeah, it's cool. But me and him, we get each other. We're kind of similar in the same way. Right. Because we're kind of misunderstood by people. People just. A lot of people won't fuck with Tekka because they think that he don't like them. When in reality, Tekka doesn't like them. He just don't know them. Mm. You know what I mean? Shit like that. He has a little bit of that vibe that he just seems I mean, he like just he, doesn't he, fuck with nobody who didn't. Right. Like, he don't like the people who come around now. Like, He just shit. seems a little skeptical of, yeah. uh, of people who are trying to enter his life now, I guess. He said something to me one day. It always stuck me. He said, Taz, you know why I fuck with you? I said, what's up, bro? He said, I fuck with you because nobody likes you. And he said that. Dead that ass, we were, out, we were out of my hot tub. No, that really bro, hurt my there's, there's nothing in this world that can hurt my feelings, bro. I'm from Florida uh -huh. where they jaw motherfuckers. They will roast you alive. Uh -huh. There's nothing in this world that can hurt my feelings. Nothing. I literally, he said he, he fucks with me because everybody hates me. And I know that they hate me and I still do what I got to do. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? People like try to get me out the paint. You know what I mean? People try to get me out the way. They don't like how I move. They don't like how I'm very honest and open. And I still do what I got to do. And no matter who wants me out the paint, I'm collecting that fucking rebound mm -hmm. when it bounces off the fucking rim. <laughs> that's what that's what it is. For sure. But it's like the tech is shit, bro. Like I played them all those records. Uh -huh. I sent them ransom. They said no. You, you sent that to Alamo? Yeah. And does that hurt that he's not signed to 10K but, now? Nah, because it, it was never about 10K. 10K wasn't even in the picture then. Right, but like in your ideal world, there's a lot of artists. Do that... I wish that Tekka was signed to me on my label? Yeah. Of course. Like I think right. he's he's one of my favorite artists. Why wouldn't I want him signed to me? But I still get to work very closely with him, and I'm cool with his whole team, his manager, G, like Julian, and our everybody. I'm cool with everybody. Like They're really good people. Mm. And then they, they know what they're getting with me and I, how passionate I am about Tekka shit. Right. And I think that's we, we got a good dynamic. They figured out how to make the relationship work you know what i mean mm, definitely C certain people i think we're just waiting on me to grow up them to grow up other situations whatever like they artists that i was on bro like every artist that i've that i went and found or helped find i got told no on uh. i got told no on trevor i was told that trevor was just a songwriter mm, really? i was told that they told i was told verbatim he's he's ugly he's just a songwriter and I don't fuck with that because it's like I don't give a fuck what people look like. If you're talented, you're talented. He's ugly. Wow. No, nah, he's not ugly. And Trevor is like. No, it's just crazy though because that is the kind of shit that they say. In that labels. is what labels it's say. So much about that image and say. shit. Yeah. And this isn't a diss towards any label or anybody, but it's just how people move and maneuver, like Juice. Right. I was told Juice was a little Uzi clone. Oh wow! Really? By Alamo? No. This oh. is before Alamo. Holy shit! That's a bad take. If you couldn't see what Juice World was doing, then you, you, you really should not be in this business. I just feel like there's a lot of people who talk shit on internet money or talk shit on me or talk shit on Nick Mirror without having an actual idea of the shit that we've actually contributed to and the roles we played in the people that they love and listen to his life. You know what I mean? Right. Does Is like the Juice situation an example of something that it, it, it hurt at that time that you weren't necessarily as involved business-wise as you wanted to be? I was never really, I never really had the relationship with Juice. Mm. Whenever Nick started working with Juice, I was still on the internet, bro. I was still selling type beats. So, like, I wasn't thinking, like, I didn't know the, I didn't, the world of developing artists. I didn't care. Mm. I was just like, man, fuck that shit. I'm, I'm running it up online. Why do I care about signing developing artists? So, Nick and them, they just wanted to work with artists because they were young kids and just wanted to work. So, they found this kid. Side piece, aka DT, my producer found Juice, and there's people who have real industry jobs who found Juice World, and they say, "I got the job because I've found Juice." Man, the fuck out of here. Mm. The kid in Seattle found Juice World with 200 followers, right, and helped develop him to what he is now, yeah. or what he, you know what I mean? But the, like, do you? Feel I was. I'm just saying, I was never. I was never really involved in the Juice shit. Right. Like I was there to make sure the business on Nixon was handled and all that shit. And like Nick loves Juice and DT loves Juice, and there was never like beef and all that shit i think it was just like the minute that they were working and they were doing everything how do you go from producing records with somebody and like uploading the songs for them mm. doing the cover art for them to a label coming in and like strong arm in the situation and saying like no we don't need you to do this no more we got this mm. no we don't need you to do this no more we got that oh you're you're doing this you're charging this much for this all right bet we'll have someone remake that you know mm. what i mean like disrespectful shit to like fuck up their relationship Mm. When in reality, it was never Juice and it was never Nick. It was never nobody. It's just 
politics, bro. And it's crazy though because there's so much money to be made that from super early on. And they were always the cool. No, no, no. They were always cool and shit. Like, the, I, I feel like the the label for sure didn't want us working together because obvious reasons and obvious shits happen. Where like I've been in studio sessions with somebody from the label and they'll say something smart. You know what I mean? Like a whole different artist session, some shit like that. But Juice and Nick still they. They talked and they worked and they did their thing and they created history, bro. Like they did their thing. Mm. And I feel like we all kind of left our mark on that in some way. Like everybody played a, a role, mm. like some bigger than others, some larger than others. But like that's just like a once in a lifetime thing. I know there's like a lot of confusion about exactly what happened that, that day with Juice when he passed. But overall, in a general sense, I mean, Juice was not in probably great health at that time as a result of the drugs. Do you feel like that something like when, when you sign an artist that there's, there needs to be more accountability or that people really need to like stop just accepting that a young artist is just abusing drugs and do something about it. Or I'm I mean, not, I'm not going to speak on the juice shit. Cause I don't know. And mm -hmm. I didn't have the relationship with juice like that. And I'm good friends with Bibby and mm -hmm. I'm good friends with like people that were close to that situation. And I'm, you know, Nick is my producer. That's like my best friend right there. And he was very, felt very strongly about it. So I'm not going to speak on the juice shit, but I can speak on the label shit with drugs. I think it all just boils down to, and not speaking on juice situations has nothing to do with juice. I just think it just comes to the people around you. Mm. I think it just comes to like friends, you know, like you got best friends, you got people who they remember you and you wasn't shit and you come in, you get a, you get a deal, you get some money, you blow up and then they don't want to tell you no and miss their opportunity. Mm. So they're not going to tell you no when's, when's too much. You know what I mean? It's just you got to eliminate the yes men around you. And it's it's kind of crazy, though, because it's like what is the more empathetic thing for somebody like you to do if you met an artist tomorrow and they were like the most incredible artist and you knew they could be huge, their music was incredible, but they had a bad drug problem. Should you sign them and then try to help them or should you just be like, no, I'm not going to sign them until they get their shit together knowing that somebody else is going to sign them? Nah, but... I don't think it even looks like that. I think it all comes to, I got to just, every every case is different. There's people who got demons and they got shit that they, you know, they abuse and shit like that, but you would never know. Mm. And then there's people to where it's just like crazy. You know what I mean? I think it's just meeting people and talking to people. Like if they understand and they need help with that problem, I'm there to help. Mm. But I don't like getting into people's problems because you never know what people been through. You know what I mean? So it's like, I'm here. People come up to me and like, Hey, bro, I want to get help with this situation. I want to get that. And I'm here with support. Mm. But I'm not going to sit here and stick my nose in your business and kind of, like, shove it down your throat. How you need to live your life? You know what I mean? Like, it I kind of puts people in a weird situation in the industry because it's like, I don't never look at shit for money. I don't never look at shit about the, I always chase the opportunity. Every artist I've signed or found or whatever, they were not somebody who was big on world star, big doing this shit, every label wanted. It was kids that we really found and we really work with and develop something crazy about. So it's like you get in before the fame, you get in before the money ruins them, you get in before the clout ruins them, you get in before the bitches that they've been wanting to fuck their whole life is now in their DMs asking to fuck them. You know what I mean? Like, mm. You get to see how people are. I'm not like I'm not in the business of going and finding people I don't have a connection with. Mm. I'm not, I don't I don't I will never sign somebody just the fact I can make a lot of money off them. Right. I sign somebody about the fact that like do I believe in them? Do I have a vision for it? Am I how much work am I gonna have to put into this? You know mm. what I mean? Like you would any other investment you make. Mm. Mm, time is the most valuable investment for me. Mm. Like how much time is it gonna take to break this artist? Right. How much of my time in a day to day basis is going to take to develop this artist? But what's the, what, what's the ultimate thing that you feel like you're building to? Do you want to be like the dude who has, you know, the label that has, you know, 50 of the biggest artists that came out over the past 10 years, like 10 years from now? What, is that your goal is to like really define yourself by how many artists you are able to develop and break? Or would it mean more to you even to have like the one Drake versus like 50? you know, 1% yeah. of Drake's. I feel like the problem with that is people are looking at it like the wrong way. You're already going in with like expectation or like a, a goal in mind. Like my goal, I achieved that shit a long time ago, bro. This is me. This is me having fun. Anything that comes, I could fall off tomorrow. I could not get another placement. I'm like very, very appreciative of like where I've gotten and where everybody around me has gotten and what we've built and where we got. I don't look at it like... 
just how other people look at it with that shit, bro. There's mm. never nothing like that. Right, because, I mean, you have enough money that you could probably just chill on the beach or whatever if we weren't on quarantine. Um, but you're still kind of in the trenches actually working on music every night. But there's you, people who don't. I'm probably one of the only people who work how I work. Right. There's executives, bro, who will sign an artist. This is your budget. This is what you got to do. Yeah. This is your day-to-day person. This is who you're going to work with. If you have any questions regarding studio time, videos, anything that pertains to being an artist that you need to talk to the label, mm. this is who you talk to. It's a different business because you sign you know, a lot of people and then just sort of leave it up to chance versus what you do where you very much sort of micromanage what's going on. Yeah, but I mean, like, everybody, I'm just passionate about it. My goal with this shit, bro, is I just want to, I guess I just want people to, I want to be like Jimmy, bro. I want to be like Jimmy Iovine. Mm. Interscope. I want to have every album in the top top 10. Number one. Mm. Number two. Number three. I want to have every album on my shit. Every genre. Mm. I just signed a country artist. Really? I signed a country artist. How the hell did you even find that? He's from Canada. His name's Turbo. 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 Okay. And he's from Canada, so it's not racist. <laughs> why, would it, why would Turbo be racist? Nah, bro. I'm saying like you know that there's a stigma with like country people and shit like that. Like, should be going. If you sign somebody from the south, like, oh okay, yeah. You know how should be going. They be thinking they make country music, they're racist and shit. But he's nah, like, I don't think Canada's very racist for the most part. I just nah, it's just a joke. He's not yeah. from the south, so it's not racist. No, that is good. No, I was just wondering. I thought it was about the name. Um, oh nah, Turbo. <laughs> but yeah, bro. I just that's that's my goal with that. But shit. is that the inevitable conclusion of uh, internet money and you in particular sort of being known for like the rock beats, the guitar beats that you would eventually just be like, I'm gonna f- sign a fucking country singer, dude. No. And do you feel like that's bro, an unfair stereotype? Yes, bro. We don't. <laughs> We all use guitars. All of everybody in the money, we all grew up playing guitar and doing that shit. But I don't mm-hmm. think that's what we, I feel like that's just what we got known for because one of our biggest songs was Lucid Dreams. Right. And the whole guitar shit following but that But there was bullshit. like a time period where it felt like a lot of those sort of like pop punk type beats were, were real popping and that, yeah. that style like feels super played out to me already. There's originators in that shit, bro. Like yeah. the, Smoke Sax, one of them. True, we, true. 100%. We, like, I, I feel like... I wouldn't say we're an originator of it, but I feel like we helped kind of push it forward with it. Right. But I'll never sit here and say we took credit for guitar beats and doing that shit because everybody, the little baby doing goddamn guitar beats. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, I feel like it's just like the instrument of the decade right now. Right. I guess. I don't know. It's weird though because like guitar based music, like rock music is kind of an all time low. Yeah. But I mean, it's because people don't want to be rock stars no more. Mm. Yeah. That, that, like the rock stars don't want to be rock stars. <laughs> I guess. Um, the rappers so, want to be the rock stars. I lost it. Where was it? I had it right in my brain. Oh, yeah. No, I wanted to say was that, like, okay, Lil Peep comes out and, like, very, like, I feel like he's one of the biggest people that was sort of known for, like, a lot of that guitar beat stuff. Yeah. And then he passes, and it almost felt like that style sort of passed with him because I've heard so many artists that try to do that style since, and it doesn't feel like there's really as much of an appetite for it. I've heard, I've heard so many, like, half decent like ex clones and when i say ex clones yeah. i mean like like the early stage of his career yeah. sort of thing and it's like nobody wants to hear that nobody wants to hear a, a, a wannabe of the original sometimes i just feel like it depends on who the artist is mm. because you remember when like thug was coming around and thug was just kind of copying everything wayne was doing mm. and he was taking shit that wayne was doing and mixing it with his own little fucking thing you know what i mean right and like travis is a combination of cuddy and kanye and and now most of the time when we talk about Thug and all the people who are clearly They're looked like at the, as like the originators. Right, we look at Gunna and, and Baby. And yeah. even I was just listening to the new Playboy Cardi song. I'm like, God, this is so post-Young Thug. Like, there's, there's so many artists now, and we don't often feel the need to bring Lil Wayne in when we talk about Young Thug being the originator, even though Young Thug obviously was so I, I just feel influenced like, by I Wayne. I feel like when an artist passes away or something like that crazy happens and they're known for a sound, and people like people just come in and kind of bite it mm. it's just like you don't want to hear it because they know what you know what they're doing you know what i mean right i don't mm. i hear a lot of fake six nines too and i don't feel like people are really gravitating towards the fake six nines <laughs> i think it just depends on a, a case-by-case basis like everyone draws inspiration from somebody like no one's a hundred percent original mm. and the people who do have like fucking 300 followers on twitter and claim mm. they're fucking original but no one's actually someone's did what you're thinking before at least mm. You don't have any impulse to like t- 
take an older artist and like spruce up their career because that's like when, Val, 50, when 50 Cent blew up, that's what he did. He went and signed Mob yes. Deep and MOP. Bro, I tried was to make just doing high. this yesterday, right? So I was outside. I was high as a bitch, right? Mm-hmm. High as a bitch. I'm sitting there with listening to music. So I put everybody on the old shit. And I was, because I got people in our money at 17, bro. So they don't remember what early 2000s was like. No clue, yeah. So I was putting them on the game and I was like, Sean Kingston. <laughs> so I hit up Sean Kingston. I'm gonna tell Mr. SK to pull through the crib. You know what I mean? Oh wow, you got a I'm relationship try, uh, like that? Okay. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to. Uh, I introduced you to Sean Kingston. I put Sean Kingston on. <laughs> I'm gonna bring Sean Kingston back. I no. gotta go, Big Draco, on him real quick. Yeah. Bro. You know I'm drinking out the gallon. <laughs> out the gallon. Always. Patrick CC is very happy about this. Patrick CC. Um, yeah, what, what is that? Why is there like a whole cottage industry of YouTubers who are like hell bent on exposing Taz Taylor or covering the intricacies <sighs> of your life? You sort of know. open yourself up to it by working with so many young artists. I don't know. I think that's just me. If anything, that just shows that like I stand up for my artists. Because if the, I was never brought into anything intentionally like it's not about me it was about the artist mm. and then the fact they're working with us or whatever you know what i mean it's just like if someone says something about an artist like i look at it like they're saying something about me because i spend so much time and i'm so dedicated and passionate about it mm. so i'm just like they're not the confrontational type i'm from the south i'm a firm believer in like everything has to be confrontational to break through because people still gonna be fake and have feelings whatever so it's like what's up with the problems bro like what's up with it you got something to say what's up mm. and they just I don't know, bro. They talk shit, but it's not its not real. But now that you're no longer working with them... If, if the shit that people say about me, Adam, was true, and you know this, bro, mm-hmm. being in the music industry and dealing with the politics of the shit, if 1% if the shit that people said about me was true, I would not... No one would pick up my phone. Mm. But what are the worst things that, that bother you the most? Because like when I think about a lot of those videos, the biggest accusation is basically that you're just like creating industry plants. And do you... Now that you don't work with Ian Dior anymore, are you willing to accept that to some extent that you were industry planning that situation? Every artist is an industry plant, though. Every artist in the music industry is an industry plant. Okay. Because there's people helping them. There's homeboys who, like, they can't rap and sing, but they're hella culture, and they're checking out the new shit, putting them on the new game. Mm. There's people that write for people. There's people that style for people, go pick out their clothes. There's people who run their fucking social medias. Mm. No artist is unscathed. Every single artist. I've seen every single artist. Some way and some no nobody nobody period. I didn't get here on my own. People helped me get here. Mm. There's someone helping. People want to label that industry planting. Industry planting is whenever an art a label signs an artist mm-hmm. and acts like they're unsigned. Right. And they're not affiliated with them. They don't do anything. If I'm the fucking label owner and I'm promoting these artists, how is that an industry plant? Mm. Because I'm blatantly telling you right. what I'm what is what I, what what is signed to me mm. and I'm working with. It doesn't really make sense. They just think that like every artist is fucking original mm. and some creative genius. When reality, 90, fucking 85% of these artists I get in the room with, y'all think are creative geniuses? Not. They Do have you, people with them who are. Are there other people when you look at other examples that maybe you weren't involved with, but you see other people doing things where you're like, oh no, that's an industry plan. That's definitely yeah, what's it's happening It's like, bro, right if here. I was to sit here and go fucking pick up a goddamn baseball bat right. and try to hold it, people who play baseball baseball their whole lives will be like, he knows how to hold a bat. He played baseball. Right. So whenever I see other artists and other little shit going on, I've, I look at that, I'm like, yep, they're planted. But I'm not the only people. Mm. There's people in the industry all the time who like, Find shit and like, yeah, this this smells like an industry plant to me mm. because everybody's just trying to get that fucking check. Bro, well, we're always trying to figure it out because sometimes like I'll, I'll I'll hear I heard a song by a female artist the other day and I was just like, oh my god, that sounds like they just had the best songwriter in the world write that song. Like that song Maybe. sounded way too. That song sounded so much better than everything I ever heard from this artist. But you never know. Maybe they've been in the studio for six months and they're just way better now, and yeah. that's why that song is so much better. I don't. I try not to make assumptions at this point, especially when it comes to female rappers, because a lot of people make that assumption off rip anyway. But yeah. I just look at it like artists are like actors. You don't get mad at Terrence Howard because he's not DJ from Hustle and Flow like twenty four seven. Like he has a thing. There's people who write that script for him. You don't pick out what the fuck he says, right. but you still love the movie and maybe one of your best movies. Mm. Whenever you get to the side, it's just a business, and you understand that like that's how the business moves. But have you and it's had, one of those things that's like unspoken on. Do you ever use songwriters? Have you signed artists yeah, that uh, needed songwriters? I've rip? used songwriters because whenever you you did your deal with APG, uh-huh. I'm an APG. You know that 
APG does songwriters. Mm -hmm. APG signs every publisher has songwriters. But you do sessions where you'll go in. Yeah, I mean every 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 producer does though, Mm. because a lot of these bigger ass artists, bro, they don't write their shit. They ain't got time. Mm. They're they got photo shoots. They got other shit. They got appearances. They got shit. They got dope. They ain't got time to write their shit, bro. Right. They ain't, you tell these motherfuckers like, I'm in a studio with artists where they're like, I've been touring every day for the past fucking four years. Uh-huh. Give me a fucking break. Can I get a break? Can I get a break? <laughs> they ain't got time to fucking write lyrics and do that shit. They collaborate a lot because uh-huh. they got they go through like different experiences in their life to where like. A songwriter may be able to make it make sense for them and mm. like conceptualize a song. I have seen some rappers who I would categorize as legendary rappers sitting in the studio with a songwriter, basically like writing their entire verse with someone the else. Verse shit, that's a different monster, right? Oh. If if uh, if I don't know, I ain't seen no one write no verse. Really? If I'm in there, it's to write a hook. Really? Okay. Because that's where the money is, bro. <laughs> that's where the, the catchy shit is. That's what's on the TikToks. That's when all that shit is the hook. Right. You know what I mean? And like, if you're writing a verse, then, hey, bro, that's that's a plant. Right, because it should be so easy to write a verse, right? All you got to do is talk about yourself. I literally came up with this shit yesterday. I'm like, bro, I've, go listen to Fetty Wap. Go listen to uh, My Way and listen uh-huh. to Fetty Wap's verse. He goes on for like 48 bars. And no one gives a fuck because you're just like, <laughs> the fuck is he talking about? Like, he's just saying the same shit and then, what? And you're like, oh, okay. I know why I like this. This is great. What went wrong, what went wrong with Fetty Wap from your perspective? Fetty's my boy. Is he? Fetty is my boy. We got Not the that same... anything went wrong. No, no, no. Career, we, got the, we got the same lawyer. Right. Shao Navarro. We got the same lawyer. Uh-huh. Um, Fetty's a good person. Fetty, I'm going to be real with you. In, in the lines of people I met in this industry, number one best person to like meet and talk to and kick it with, Fetty really? Wap. Wow. Fetty Wap, nicest guy. He's always just standing out to me as an insane example of somebody who came out with like a signature style, put out a bunch of fucking songs that all kind of sounded like that style, and then it seems like the public's appetite for that style went away so quickly. I don't, I don't look at it like that. I don't think, I don't think the appetite for that style went away because there's a lot of artists who still bite and you oh yeah, say, super influential. Yeah, but, it felt like but that's he what I'm saying. I think, I think there's, out. I think. Uh, I think there's shit behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, I heard a bro, lot like whenever you come too, up yeah. from what certain people will come up from and deal with what they got to do and you throw a bunch of money in their face and people trying to get a cut of that money and do all that shit, you know what I mean? Like, you switch up. People, everybody switch up. I'm not saying he switched up. I'm just saying, like, it happens. Yeah. But, like, I feel like that's what happened. Like, at the end of the day, like, he went on a crazy run. He's a, he's a legend for it. Yeah. And he's an overall good person. Fetty's, like, a, a great guy. Right. Love Fetty. That. There's, there's rappers that I don't fuck with. That I've been in a studio session where I'm like, I'll never do another fucking session with them. Really? Yeah, but Fetty, I don't give a fuck. If Fetty ain't had a hit in 30 years, Fetty could call me. Mm. I'll get in a studio session with Fetty Wap, and I'm going to try my damnness to get Fetty Wap a hit. Shout out Fetty Wap. Shout out Fetty Wap. Um, are you too traumatized to ever sign another female artist after what happened with the face tattoo girl? No. <laughs> have, I mean, have you not since her? Or? I mean... I've worked with artists, bro. Like, it's never even nothing like that. Like, the shit that was made out for whatever. It's bullshit. Mm. So it's like, I, at the end of the day, like I said earlier, bro, people know what the fuck goes on. And you know how shit moves and people operate in this shit. And check people's histories, bro. Mm. Check who's who has something to lose and who doesn't. Like... Everything people say is bullshit. And if I, my shit was as bad as people say that I'm as bad as a person, I'd be canceled, bro. Mm. In the music industry, I'd be canceled. But I'm, I'm outside of shit. People don't fucking know me because the only time they see me or see my name is when I got to snap on people over dumb shit that they do. I don't never cast no fucking first stone, bro. Mm-hmm. Ever. Ever. People always say my name and bring me out. And I'm like, bro, why, why you got to do this or why you got to do that? Mm. At the end of the day, all that shit happened because motherfuckers need attention. I don't need attention. I don't need anything. That's why I don't do interviews. How mm-hmm. many, I, Adam, how long have you been asking me to do interviews? It's been a little while now. Okay, and I haven't agreed to do no interview. I fired my publicist. Yeah, I felt like you wanted to do an interview bad like over a year ago. When I got in this shit and I was wet behind the ears and it was cool. Lately, I've decided that or I just kind of came to the conclusion that we needed to have an in-depth chat, you know? I just feel like I don't got to explain nothing to nobody because I know at the end of the day, like everything I'm doing, I'm giving people opportunity. I'm changing their life. I'm not doing nothing weird. There's no fuck shit going on. Right. When you fuck with me, you know that my intentions are good. I'm looking out for you, your best interest. And you as a person outside of shit. I, don't, I could be some of these people, bro. There's shit. Why do you think some people lay low, bro? 
Uh-huh. Some people don't want to be seen. Once they get to a certain level. No, know. no, no. Period. There's people behind the curtain of the music industry don't want to be seen. Mm. Their job is to lay low. Right. If I'm in people's faces, bro, and all this shit, come on, bro. I don't care. Yeah. I say how I feel and I mean what I say and I got here on my own. Can't no one break me for it. Mm. And I never relied on anybody to put me on. Right. I put my cell phone and whenever people told me don't bring internet money in the sessions, why do you got these kids with you? Why you got these producers with you? What, what are they doing? The artist is worried because you got five producers. You need to get, I brought my fucking producers in and we worked uh-huh. and we delivered records. Right. Whenever you get up and you get to something, bro, like you're not going to, not everybody's going to be happy working with you in this business because like everybody comes in with the wrong intentions and they all need something anyways. Uh-huh. So the minute that you don't work out, you're going to start trying to blame everybody. Look at this Joe Exotic shit, bro. Everybody <laughs> snitched on my man just as soon as he got locked up. Right. And it's like, if you were with them for how long? 11 years, 15 years? Right. And, and you girl, just, they just want attention, the bro. The chick who got her arm chomped off, she was riding with them. She was a ride or die. She was a real one. And like... Uh, she actually identifies as a they, so I shouldn't say yeah, she. Yeah, him. Whatever. I, th- I seen that. Was, that was like a thing. Yeah. It's like, She's but a they. He said on the, in the new episode, I don't know if you've seen the new episode, that right. it didn't bother him. What? The... Mis- yeah, the, 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 they, the pronouns. Yeah, yeah. that. It's a day. Yeah, I mean, he had his fucking they arm cut were, off. I don't think the bothered. last thing he cares about in a day what people call him. Right. Like, my man is just lucky to be here right now. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Uh, ain't that the truth? So, know, you got the, no love for Carol Baskin? This is all Florida shit, bro. That's probably, you're probably related to some of them. Bro, I can guarantee you for a fucking fact I'm related to a bunch of them. Mm. <laughs> did you ever hit up the, the, the no 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 did you ever go the, to see anything like that though like a, oh, yes. like a weird illicit zoo bro there's alligator farms in fucking jacksonville bro really? what yes it goes down bro like that's that. just normal i told my mom my mom's like well me and we watch this shit and it's like your whole goddamn family <laughs> bro real deal i literally have like five uncles yeah who look like joe exotic i was saying that to my girl i'm like honestly like from a new hampshire perspective like none of these people really shock me like this is not anything Bro, out of the ordinary south, that's my na- i'm looking over that's what your neighbor looks like in florida yeah it's not that's that the shit is normal the, the the specific things that they were doing and like him with the no eyebrows and just <laughs> being gay and on meth and stuff a lot of it was <laughs> a little bit more interesting than like people i grew up around but you know that's my family bro I got yeah. an uncle named Bug. I got yeah. an aunt named Booger. <laughs> Book. <clears throat> my, my granddaddy used to call us maggots. I got a cousin named Skeeter. Right. Wow. It's, it's real, bro. Like, that's the South. That's hard. That's South. That's the South. But do you identify with that anymore? Are we going to see you in a Confederate flag jumpsuit? No. No, no you're not going to get no. yellow wolf on us? <laughs> no. Bro, I've been lied to 27 years of my life. Why? <laughs> so listen, bro. My whole life, bro. <laughs> my mom has told me I'm Native American. Oh. Cherokee, Blackfoot, mixed. Native American. Yeah. My whole life, my, my fucking dumbass grandma would be like, come to the Okefenokee Swamp. This, this is your heritage. This is your shit, right? I took a 23 and me yesterday. I am 99.2% European. Wow. I called my mom. I'm like, mom. Like Elizabeth Warren. You know what's crazy, bro? Is I told my mom a couple of days before it even came in. I was like, mom, as soon as this shit hits, like it was a joke. Yeah. My mom was like, DJ, I don't even know why the fuck you're taking that shit. Everyone fucking knows you're Cherokee. Right. My assistant is my witness. He was sitting right where we were making sweet tea. I was like, all right, bet. Came in. I'm 99% European. I wonder how they got that mixed up. I don't know, bro. My whole life, I was like, I wonder why we ain't never seen no check for no school or nothing. Mm. But I had cousins dropping out in the first grade. So I was like, I guess we ain't never had no motivation. I guess this wow. shit not real. That's crazy. That's <laughs> fucked up. That must be such a weird thing to live with, though. Just Bro, like- I, every day for the past, how many days has it been, Denzel? Bro, every day for the seven years that Denzel's known me. Yeah, bro. He's Native American. Yeah, yeah bro. Like, that's what it is. And I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. Well, there's like a certain comfort in not just being a regular like ass Dirt. white person, right? No, like, bro, I'm pasty, bro. Yeah. I'm as pasty as it gets. I'm fucking, I am mayonnaise, right, bro. Right, but I've definitely, like, I remember this dude that I used to hang out with back when what? I was like 18, 19, and he was a quarter black. Oh my God, you you couldn't pay this guy to go 10 minutes without mentioning it. And he just no, I was never loved like that. it. I was but, never like that. And it wasn't like, it was like he barely knew his dad. So it's not like he had any real like relationship to like any black people, but he <sighs> loved to emphasize it because it made him not white and we were white. So it's like, there, there is like a weird thing that happens with us sometimes. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm fucking white, bro. God damn, bro. Fuck, bro. I've been, I've been knowing I was white. DC Young Fly asked me if I was black. I don't, that was a weird moment. Nah. I was like, I don't no. know, bro. I come from the South. I'm sorry. I'm All my white. friends are of color. Right. And so it's just crazy. But, I can't even say that. But no is more. that part of the that's part of the internet money uh, <laughs> stereotype, right? Is that y'all just sign like every white kid with like blue hair or something? No, or? every oh. white kid with fucking you got some glasses. Some POCs now, right? But shout out, little spirit, by the way, little yeah. spirit, blue hair, my He's boy, the blue hair one, yeah. He's the blue hair kid. Is he He's fine. With blue hair. If he wants to switch his hair up, are you but that's like, him. Nah. I never told him to make his hair blue. Really? I never told him. He, that, he's always had blue hair. And he's the most talented artist in the music industry. I've searched high and low, and I've found him. Mm. And he's mine. So it's you fire. tell him to make, like, to make TikToks, but do you tell him to like make? I don't tell them to do stream? anything. <laughs> you no, tell no, him no, like no. Get on Twitch. He's trying to catch me in a loophole Play right Fortnite. here. This is what we like to call a loophole. <laughs> he's trying to catch me with, and I testify. If I had a fucking Bible, I'm not religious. I would put my right hand on that motherfucker. If the left hand, whatever, whatever mm. one it is, I do not tell them to do anything anymore. Right. They go do their shit and they come to me like, yo. Do you fuck with this? Yeah, I like this. Maybe you shouldn't do this no more. Maybe this lane or the style, these type of beats, mm. the the content you're writing your lyrics about. Maybe that's not what you should. You should wait until you get into that shit, a little darker, a little deeper. Well, do you feel like you're more effective when you sort of suggest it rather than when you like just tell them? Mm, bro, you gotta understand these new kids. They're like, tell me now, please. Fuck, I want to know mm. because they're just creatives. They don't care about like. They care first about just making music, and they expect me to get the other shit handled. Mm. They're just creators, bro. They're fucking talented artists. Interesting. And I feel like it, all along, these are the type of people I should have been fucking with. Uh, but when it comes to somebody like Spirit, like he has a huge song, does it feel weird that it's still hard to make people understand that he's going to be huge in your perspective? Because mm. people don't really want to accept it I think, until it's. I think the crazy stigma behind Spirit is like everybody knows that he's going to be like on. Mm. Like before I assigned him, bro, I was getting. He didn't have no team. You know what I mean? Like I was the team. Mm. Before I decided to sign him and we did all this shit, we worked everything out. And he has a manager and he has all that shit on his own team. And it's divided. And we work well together. It was just me and him. Mm. And. Labels, the CEO of these labels, big labels, massive labels, the biggest labels in the game, were FaceTiming me. Hey man, Grammy weekend's coming up. Can we get, can we get, can we get a look at him? Can we see if he's fired? Can you play some unreleased music? Can you share the notes app with me? All this shit. And so I was like, I feel like now everyone's just like, he might have one now. Uh -huh. Cause like they seen Tekka shit slip through my fingers. They seen the Juice shit slip through my fingers. Mm. The Trevor shit I had, and it's like. Thief in the night, <laughs> so, but yeah, I feel like I finally I got one. I got a couple of them. Yeah. Alec Wigdall's fire. He's a pop artist. Turbo's fire. Two rares fire. He's like a rapper out of Philly. Uh -huh. Tekka, I still work very close with Tekka. I don't I don't need Tekka to be signed to me to work with him. Like I'm very happy in the position I am with him. Right, definitely. Do you uh do you like the idea of getting like your favorite artist to come through the crib to record at the crib? Does that happen often? Is that even a focus? Or are you happy to just be in your, your little gang? I feel like if it's meant to be, it'll be. I'm from Florida, so my whole life, bro, I grew up looking and idolizing, like, T-Pain. Wow. T-Pain's God to me. Still, even in this day, we had a studio session and where this man, T-Pain, just had to get ready for an award show, right. and he didn't really have time to listen to the music, but we were just cool in there laughing with him, chopping it up, and I never looked at that like, I ain't gonna make music with T-Pain. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. It was like a year but, ago that T Pain was saying that he was going to start OnlyFans, and I was telling him that I was going to cop it, and then he <laughs> never did it. But meanwhile, Safari now has an OnlyFans, which I'm going to cop. T Pain's a legend. I'm You're going to cop Safari's OnlyFans? I you got to do it right it. now for proof. No, I, I don't have it on my phone. I got to do it on my laptop. I got to see it right now. No, but I don't think he's going to be showing the, <laughs> the, the, the full Anaconda. There's no Whoa! Way. There's no way. Yo. I just don't think he would do it. But I'm gonna pay for it. I'm fi it's twenty one dollars. It's twenty one. My man, Safari out here. Alex's was uh, fifty dollars. I, I bought. I that. don't even. I don't even think about OnlyFans. Right. No, I, that was my first one getting Alex. Nah, shut the fuck. You should up. sign her. Bro, come you know? on, bro. Come on. She got face tats. I'm. I'm sure she's doing her thing. She's got I don't a fucking poem on her face. Why bro, not? shout out to whoever. I, I don't. I don't, I don't clown people, bro. Like, I don't look at people and, like, laugh at them for doing their thing. They're, even if I don't work with them, it's not like, fuck them. I still do my thing. They do their thing, and I'm sure what they're doing is working for them. Right. We got to like, get you to sign some street artists. We got to get you somebody from South Central. 
I'm down for whatever. Like okay. I, I can work with any artist, bro. Okay. I don't I don't know why people think like I only pick a certain type of artist. But does like, that freak you out if they're gang banging on the song? Bro, I and come shit? from Northside Jacksonville, Florida, bro. Down Avenue. I lived there my whole fucking life. My mom lived in the fucking hood. Right, but you didn't. My sign, mom, my mom had fucking. Sign no hood artists, bro. Right? It doesn't matter. My friends like all this shit, bro. Like this is nothing, bro. Right. Okay. People just I want to because see you I'm now a, I'm now newly acclaimed pasty. They want to try. I want to see you sign like a young because boy I'm, style I'm young artist. olive mayonnaise over here. Now there's like a whole thing. It's like a young boy style artist. Young boy so that popular that there's around. like young boy. Whenever type you artists. had a label, they wanted you to fucking do a Kodak black ass artist. They wanted you to do you to do. I would a like NBA to sign a Kodak boy. black ass artist. That's what they that's, that's what they what classify them as. Even now they're like yeah. In, in Florida, there's two lanes. There's Kodak Black, or if they're closer to fucking near Tallahassee and up near New Orleans, they're like young boy. Hmm. There's no if more they're Atlanta, pumps. they're like young thugs. No more low pumps. There's no more X's. There's no more Santa Cloud rappers. I mean, bro, that's rap Miami. Day? Miami's its own fucking thing. I don't. I don't really classify. <laughs> right. <laughs> Miami is. I'm from North Florida. That's like to people in Jacksonville. Miami's six hours away. Yeah. So it's like it doesn't exist to it's us. It's like the Bay to us. Yeah. Duval County. Free Tankhead. <laughs> Free Tank A. Tankhead and TK, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was saying Tankhead. I thought you said TK. Damn. Shout out TK, though. Free TK. Just saying that makes me realize I got some crazy ass friends. <laughs> I never met TK. Or, uh, uh, it's TK. Sorry. I'm saying TK. I know. I know. TK I thought you said TK. TK, TK, Tankhead. This is all very confusing. I know too many people. TK. Cash. 10K Cash. Good, great guy. Great guy. You should work love, with him more. I, There's I a love hood TK. artist. He's, is he hood? <laughs> bro. <laughs> turn him into that young That is boy. my boy right there. You know get what? Get him on a diet my, and turn him no, into young boy. No, <laughs> I don't need to. I don't get my man cash on a diet, bro. Oh, listen, bro. This is how I know he's a real one. Because me and him are both bigger guys, right? Mm. And then I'm over here smoking. I'm talking to Denzel, right? And then me and Denzel is going off about nothing. 10K Cash is sitting over here. And we don't look. We don't see him in our periphery or nothing. We just hear, like, sweaters. Like, doing this shit. We look over this motherfuckers. Oh, oh, hitting that bitch. <laughs> It's a different respect. He really be doing his dancing shit. Mm. Like on the way to the bathroom, he be dancing. Did you know about the two C kid before the two C slide came out? Uh, I did not. I found out. I'm about so him in afterwards. the fucking mix, bro. You like, are okay. So you. Know. I, I'm, well, I mean, bro, I've been in the house since November. So I went to Guitar Center when I moved in. I got weirded out. A producer kneeled to me and called me God in front of the whole Guitar Center. Wow. So from that moment, that's why I quit wearing. Jewelry. <laughs> I didn't want to be noticed and I didn't care. Wow. So that's why I haven't left the house. I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like, am I going to get to the point where I want to be noticed more? I'm going to start buying jewelry so that people know. You did me that more? already. I had a chain. For you had like the 22 a, chain. You had the grills. Out. Remember the fucking grills? I you remember the grills? For like two days. Yeah. My man had the grills. Couldn't he had the. Do it. You had the trippy grills. Listen, you were going crazy with the grills. As cool as a grill looks, it's not <laughs> worth your teeth hurting a little bit and having to take it out to eat i, I just, i'm way too practical a person i, I almost wore the golds up here i literally was i was like i should put on for florida i should wear my golds do they hurt your teeth at all no i could wear my golds flawlessly legendary moment top 10 moment in soundcloud rap history is when icy narco came on the podcast and he had just gotten his grill put in and mm -hmm. it was like he's still talking funny because he just got put in and yeah. it's like just sounded crazy <laughs> He's a good guy, though. Shout out to Icy Narco. Good guy. Florida. Florida boy. Another Florida boy. <laughs> Did you see the guy who got let out of jail because of the coronavirus? And he killed and somebody? Killed somebody? That's Florida, too. Bro. That's Florida, too. Whatever that guy did to him, it must have been some real he ass shit. He was waiting. That's well, some law-abiding citizen but shit. But who knows, man? Like Some crazy shit. If you just have to go right back to the hood where you came from, and who knows what kind of dirt they got. You hear all you seeing this? You might just be right back into the fucking warfare. If you got to go back to the hood where into you came from. <laughs> fucking sound like goddamn Adam Schefter over <laughs> here. Fucking, Taylor is saying that I'm too according white. According to my sources, <laughs> he got white. out and went back to the hood where he's from. I can't believe your from. pasty ass is called me white. <laughs> <laughs> this is like getting roasted for being white by... Uh, I'm not gonna, all right, I no, was definitely no. that Pull motherfucking boy. I'm not going to say the thing I was just about to say. Could have been offensive. Lay it on me. Uh, coronavirus is... I mean, obviously, you're on the production side. Don't fuck up your money, but... If you're yeah. probably seeing a lot of artists, though, who are like, damn. Hurting. Tons of money gone. On our side? Green grassy. The grassy. It's all good. The grassy. You've been a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of money coming through. A lot of money coming in. Oh, that's good. People, more, people got to release music. More time in the studio music. is good for you. For you, touring is kind of a, a pain in yeah, the ass to deal with, I don't, right? I don't think about touring. Like, for artists and shit, obviously, it sucks. And I know artists that are, we're counting on tours and shit to go on. Mm. And now they ain't getting money from them tours. And I know that, like... That's a very big, important like revenue st revenue stream for artists. Mm. But like on my side and shit that I got to deal and sit with, like it doesn't really affect people on my side. Mm. 
We don't we don't deal with that. That's we deal nice. with we'll give you a hit while this coronavirus shit going on. So whenever you this shit lifts, you can go fucking tour it. How's Taylor quarantined in the mansion? In the mansion, three studios. Diamonds dancing. <laughs> no no diamonds. <laughs> sitting sitting somewhere. Untouched, right. dusty, really big dust. I moved my diamonds to my bedroom. You gotta have a safe at least. Yeah, I have a safe. Okay, good. I moved my shit and I was like, I don't even know the last time I put these bitches on. Right. I spent like two, three hundred thousand dollars on jewelry before. Right. So it's like, once you get to a point, bro, and just like, fuck that. It gets a hassle. You gotta wear them every fucking wear. They get heavy. How could I put two hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry on myself when I know for a fact that I know people that. Realistically, would probably kill someone for two hundred thousand dollars. I don't think like about a lot like of that. people. No, I don't think a about lot, like that. Like a lot of people would kill someone for two hundred grand. I mean, yeah, bro, but not me. But I don't look at like that. I don't look at like that. Maybe ten years ago, not me, but like someone who was in my position, definitely. So maybe about bro. that to me. I'm not. No, I don't want that risk. Northside Jacksonville, Duval County. Right. Definitely, a lot of people out there would kill someone for two hundred grand. It's not even a question. It's yeah. not even a stretch. It's not a, it was a murder capital of Florida pretty much my whole childhood, bro. Shit was crazy out there. Free Joe Exotic. <laughs> he was in Oklahoma, bro. And Joe Exotic, what he got? <laughs> Joe Exotic. I don't think Joe Exotic could have brainwashed people from Florida like that, bro. Like live in a fucking trailer I wonder for a hundred bucks. If Joe Exotic was already in PC and then they had to put him in PC, because I'm gonna be honest with you, he's someone who seems like they would flourish in protective custody. Maybe, bro. He did you see where I just seen something today where he told some judge he's like, I'm all locked up with no access to a computer. Yeah. That's crazy. And meanwhile, that's like his last wish. He just wanted to be famous, right? He, he finally probably is. sits on the phone all day having what people are they read saying? comments to him. <laughs> <laughs> read me the new TMZ article. What? Read me that new blog. God you're damn it, me Barb. About. Read me the fucking article. What the fuck are they saying? I never, I never once killed one of them goddamn animals. I'll tell you that. Imagine someone on the phone with Joe Exotic explaining who Cardi B is and explaining that she is now bro, he, whenever, supporting he, him. He knows who Cardi B is, bro. Maybe. Whenever he no, got, got picked up there, on all that shit, he yeah. she was out. She was popping. Maybe, but he's been Bodak for a Yellow while, was right? definitely thriving. Yeah, God, that must feel great for him. He, he knows who Cardi B is. She's a legend. He probably knows now for sure. Yeah, but I mean, it's not like it's just him. Like hundreds and thousands of different celebrities commentating on this that know who he is. Yeah. There's a lot of people. I, it's actually kind of crazy because if like there was never a Netflix show about it, mm. and just people who knew the situation, they would they would probably hate him. Oh yeah, but they. The, I don't want to say the TV show kind of like oh, yeah. glorified that, it, but there's people who definitely see his side of it and sympathize with him. The craziest thing about it is that Carol Baskin actually has like a real fan base. She has millions yeah. of Facebook fans and shit. And now, and and let's be honest, probably a huge percentage of them are women. And now you have Cardi B, who is a like women's rights Same, icon. Fuck that bitch, Carol Baskin. <laughs> That's crazy. Taking aim at her. I mean, hey, it's 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 a credit to the documentary maker because let's be real, like. I don't know what happened. They could have made that shit look however the fuck they want it. And that's what they do. They make it look as dramatic as possible. While, while I was watching it the whole time, I'm like, where the fuck did they get this goddamn footage from? Yeah. Oh, that's the most amazing thing about it is the fact it's like that they, he, he was filming his whole life. Every single specific thing they had footage for. Yeah, because he was filming everything. Like, almost every documentary I watch after that, I'm sort of, like, noticing when they're just using, like, B-roll of, like, a sunset yeah. or, like, an empty courtroom and all this shit. Every problem, bro, they had the cameras yeah. rolling for every single issue in that documentary. I will never financially recover from this. I will never. <laughs> this is a goddamn antenna on back of my fucking shed. That's what this is. This is a goddamn listening device. Wow. Bro, yeah. they even had the footage of my man offing himself. Yeah. He just, they was like, I was there. He walked yeah. in. It, like, perfectly angled. The reaction angled, shot. Perfectly angled on the guy. You just see his shadow. Like, How? Dude, I got a site if you want to watch some murders. Live oh leak. God. <laughs> the most disturbing one, and I feel bad for even saying this, I saw a guy hang himself in front of his kid. And then the, the kid tried to shove the chair back under his feet. This is the craziest thing I ever That's seen. That's kind of crazy. No, I don't feel good about it. I don't think I'm ever going to forget seeing Bro, that. Whenever I was in, whenever I was in fucking elementary school, right? Ocean Way Elementary. Uh-huh. And you know how like they would have computers, right? And you would, they would block certain sites. Yeah. There's one site that they didn't have fucking blocked. And it was rotten.com. Oh, no. And you would go yeah. see everybody fucking get hit by trains. Mm-hmm. And we would just be in school clicking this shit going crazy. For a kid? Going as a kid. I can't wait to explain rotten.com to my kid. You were on rotten.com? Oh, yeah. You were hip. 
I mean, it's like the very, the, very, the, very that, early days. That's of how you know yeah. I'm really in this shit. But that's it, how you know I'm really out here. It didn't take that long for me to decide. Like, I don't, I, yeah. I don't want to see someone's organs every day. <laughs> this, this, this is not having a positive impact on my life. I mean, bro, you said every year you think about a cat still, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit that I've seen, I don't think about until weird moments like this where it's brought like, oh, you do that shit too? No, I mean, like. I'm the, not, it's not like I brush my the, teeth uh, every morning with like, I see someone's oh, no, dead carcass think about on a but, fucking. But, but sometimes my cat will open his mouth real wide. What? Remember that Bruh. video? <laughs> <laughs> my man looks at his cat and is like, yo, throat, my cat though. looking dummy thick. No, yeah. Now my cat is thick as fuck, yeah. It's Bro. a problem. It's a big problem. Peter. <laughs> Leave me out of this shit. I don't wear no animal products. That's a rule at the house. Though? I don't no even think they make furs big enough to fit my you big could, ass. If I was an up and coming rapper and I got signed internet money and I had a cat, I couldn't bring them with. Bring the cats. Oh, really? Okay. I got dogs. That's bring tight. the cats. We we'll go crazy. I, I don't care if you got a fucking monkey. The cat or a ger- will shit gerbil. somewhere. The cat will, will bro, poop somewhere eventually. I remember APG, bro. Young boy used to have a fucking monkey. Remember that shit? Oh, I remember that. Yeah. He used tigers, to have like tigers. Too. That's what I told my girl while we were watching Tiger King. I said, you know that this is the, probably the kind of guy that young boy was getting tigers from. And he, the exact thing that they described, they're like, oh, people get it. And they think it's like a kitty. It's so cute. And then all of a sudden it's fucking 200 pounds. Bro, people had to clean that up. That was young boy. People had to babysit and clean up like yeah. animal shit in the studio. They told me that young boy had like animal services show up multiple times to take that. his tiger away. I am not a part of this conversation. This is Adam. That's just what I heard. I this is Adam. I'm just speaking that somebody once owned an Listen, animal, an exotic. Young boy has enough to worry about that he's probably not that worried about. He's fired. About his He's talented his artist. Animals. He's doing his thing. Yeah. You ever had a girl stab someone over you in front of you? That that I'm not that level of lit. Oh uh, no, nah, my, bitch, my bitch! I can <laughs> never see her stab. I've seen some stabbing. crazy shit. I never seen my girls. Never had a beef that was stab worthy. I threw a. I she like, threw a bottle at Henny one time. I, I feel it. like you and your relationship, y'all don't have like these type of problems. What Tiger King problems? No, I'm saying like crazy ass problems. Yeah, y'all don't have like crazy ass problems. Y'all's life is just pretty norm. Pretty I feel normal. like y'all get each other. Yeah, we're pretty normal. The the problem is whenever the female doesn't understand. And the guy doesn't understand her feelings, so they yeah. just go ape shit crazy. Yeah, no, I hear that. We're, See my we're, fair on, share. we're on a very similar wavelength of like, let's stay home, let's chill out. We don't need to begin on crazy. Get, no, but now crazy. it's required. It's required. We can't. We can't leave the house. Taz Taylor. What's up? Now it's promo time. Tell us what we gotta look out for before we end this. Um, I got an album coming out with Lil Tecca. I'm doing a whole album with him. The whole album. Yep. Tonight, Out of Love Drops, single, Internet Money and Lil Tecca, Ty Fontaine. Wow. You had him on here. He drops tonight. Yeah. He has a project coming out. 1800, April 24th, Lil Spirit, whole project coming out. Alec Wigdahl, one of the most talented pop artists. Two Rares, one of the most fire artists from Philly. Mm. If you're hip to the, the, the Philly scene, the tri-state, any of that, check them out. And, uh... Yeah, man. Just I got an idea. I got an follow idea. my fucking Finsta, Baz Baylor. How about this? I got an idea. I'll be on there smoking big ass fucking I, joints. I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm going to fuck your whole life up. Go ahead. Taz Taylor, Ronnie J, Instagram Live beat battle. Nah, you guys I don't both do the beat playing battles. hits. You're not, you I got too it. much respect for people to do the beat battles. Is Ronnie J a worthy opponent, though? That's just the I think, first person I think, I think Ronnie J is a legend. You I guys think, are I sort think, of like icons of the sort of SoundCloud era. I don't think of it like that. Okay, well, you, you he's are. a talented person. Like I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't really necessarily agree with beat battling because music's subjective anyway. So y'all gonna rile everybody up for what? Yeah, for someone but it's to say, just fun. That's just your opinion, bro. This shit's a, it's just. I seen for the Manny fun. Fresh and Scott Storch shit where Scott Storch, no one can go up against Scott Storch. Right. And Manny Fresh just still like tried, bro. Like you can't, you can't fight with guys. To me, it's just for fun. It's like look at the hits, look at the impact you made. It's a nice way to remind everybody yeah, all yeah, these songs nah, that you it, were involved If it's with. definitely positive and everybody's being supportive, like for bro, charity. Lo- no, boom, not even that. Boom, not even we that. do it for charity. Then you got to do even it. That. If people are just like, bro, I fuck with this song. What you did is fire. I fuck with you did instead of just like I'm better than you. Right. Because I don't think we're better than nobody. But I don't I think, think anybody's it, better than it's us. It's already assumed that if you're gonna do a beat battle with you, that they have respect for you because they're basically giving you clout. They're getting clout from you. They mm-hmm. clearly have to have some level of respect to be doing but it. But do you I hear think, that though? Clout place. grab. <laughs> clout grab. It is a clout grab. I don't do the clout grabs. Oh come on. This is it. bro. I don't do clout grabs. We don't, we don't care about the shit. Go ask Nick Mayer right now. And do a beat battle. Guarantee you laugh in your face. Who should he battle? I don't, I don't think. I don't go. think. Boom. Keep it in the family. I don't think Nick Mayer. Anybody could beat Nick Mayer. Really. And I mean that. And people are gonna what? get upset about that. And you know, people are fucking loading up their NPCs right now to go crazy and fucking send their floppy disk our way. But I'm telling you right now, I've seen this little kid from Virginia obliterate 
anything that anybody wants to do with beats. That kid is the fucking, he's Kobe Bryant. Right. And I'm just. You think he's doing a good job of coming out from under your shadow? Do you feel like that's an issue it, for him? I don't think it's a shadow. I'm, bro. You got a shadow. I, I have a shadow. <laughs> I'm, I'm Pat Riley. I'm Pat Riley. I'm, I'm sports He's LeBron literate. James. I'm Pat, I'm Pat Riley. I know who LeBron James is. Okay, well, Patrick Riley was the fucking the GM of the Miami Heat. Put the championship team together. Dwayne, Chris Bosh, and LeBron. That's what I am. That's what I'm be known for. I'm I'm here forever. He's he's the best in the game. The best the, the best producer I've ever had with hands of meeting and working with. Wow, that's official. That's a cool but every single right producer of mine is fire. Every single producer. Okay. Rio Leva, one of the next up producers. He's 17 years old. Will obliterate a lot of grown ass men right now. He's a weird, awkward kid. Really, little, little weird, awkward kid from from uh, Portland. Uh-huh. But he's fire. He's good. That's the, that's the game, though. Just you hey, gotta bro. get him when they're young, I guess. Nah, not yeah. even the young shit. I, bro, I tried to sign fucking Flea. Mm. Flea's 20, 26. I don't care about people's age. If you're talented, you're talented. I fuck with you. Mm. It's just what it is. I don't care. I'll sign you. Let me give you a deal. I was thinking maybe I should start. We'll learning. bring it back. We'll do hard part two. Maybe I should start learning how to make beats since I got all this time on my hands. How long do you think it would take before I could make beats that were like acceptable? If you were serious if about I, it, if I are was, you being serious about it? Are you trolling? Do you really want to learn? Say hypothetically, I was I was to put in you know f- f- five hour sessions in the studio with somebody who knows what they're doing, trying to learn. For the course of, you know, however long. Like, w- w- how long do you think it would... After, after a month, how, how good do you think I would be? Denzel, how long? Yeah, I feel Under like a if, month. if you really start out just copying people who are good, then you're going to be able to basically be able to copy people who are good within a relatively short period of time. The, to develop your own style is where it kind of becomes its own yeah. thing, right? I don't think it's like copying people. I think people are just pushing it forward in a different direction, like in, inspiring people. Mm. A lot of artists that y'all listen to are inspired by people that they get their influences from. Like Kendrick was inspired by Eminem. You know what I mean? Like Tyler Crater was inspired by Eminem. It, Young Thug was inspired by Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne was inspired by whoever the fuck he was inspired by. Like it's all, a big all I'm saying, thing. All the people that come up to me on the streets telling me that they make beats. It can't be that hard to make whack beats. Because uh, I, I guarantee these people aren't making like You're going to drive beats. yourself fucking crazy. I don't want to. Because your job every day, every day is to go make something new. From scratch with no, yeah. you see what I'm saying? Like if someone wakes up, they go work at fucking Starbucks, they have a fucking coffee. Someone made that recipe and they just, their job is just follow the ingredients and make that every day. Your job is to be creative and go make something new every fucking day right. that people fuck with, that the, make people want to go buy the record. The weird thing that I don't understand is just like all this drum technology because I hear the drums changing, but I don't really like understand like what is happening to the drums and why like a song from two years Who's ago. Who's your that, favorite producers? I don't even. Do you never check for the producers? I mean, whenever I do, you, whenever an album goes, I do, but I don't really understand what they're doing and like what really makes like one producer really stand out over one another from okay. like these days. Like it, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to like really differentiate. So whenever an album comes out, you don't go look at the credits and be like, "All right, so and so produces. I'm gonna go listen to that song. That looks like a hit." I will think about who produced the songs, but more from like a personality perspective because that's like, do you know them that's or how I like understand rap is like you know if if Young Chop produced it, I'm thinking like wow that's crazy to think that this person was having a conversation with Young Chop and I want to see like legend, what, by the way. what the synergy, oh so you like you like what he's been love doing? Young Chop he just called me a bitch so I'm, I'm at war with him right now I love Young Chop and Young Chop's a legend as a producer he's, he's a me. legend really if somebody kills me it was Young Chop. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hear a story about this in a couple months where Adam's gonna be like, "Breaking news! I got run down on in a nail parlor." He got bigger <laughs> things to worry about than me. <laughs> By Young Chop. You got if if Young Chop ends up killing me. Man, I don't Young know. Chop's a legend out here, and he definitely. <laughs> I like Young Chop. People people forget at the end of the day the shit he's responsible for, and like yeah, he's going <laughs> crazy or whatever. Like he's doing shit. He's whatever. Like whatever he's doing, that's what he's doing. He's doing a six nine thing. Whatever, but. At the end of the day, like, they got to throw respect on the shit that he created and the shit that he birthed. You know what I mean? Like, the shit that he built up. He built up uh, stars that influenced some of, like, Chief Keef. Every rapper right now is influenced by Chief Keef. Mm, that's a fact. Every, every rapper. You know what I mean? Chop influenced that. People just got to remember at the end of the day, like, these are real people and they're, they, like, 
contribute to something that you love. You know what I mean? So maybe don't judge them. Maybe don't try to understand why they're acting, how they act, or why they think how they think. I want to understand why he's acting how he acts. I just want to understand why he's dissing everybody, why he's being I mean, so bro, negative. I mean, bro, we're fucking Where, crazy. We're all crazy in this yeah, music I, industry, Okay, bro. he's crazy. Cool. Bro, but we to, get that. That's what Adam, we're discussing bro, is to this To be in the music industry, bro, you have to be fucking psychotic. Do you understand oh, that? I don't believe that. No, you have to be psychotic. To succeed at something, where everywhere, have you ever seen, had someone come up to you and be like, Hey, bro, I rap. It happens every day to you, right? Oh, yeah, all the time. Okay, and what, do you, what is the first thing that goes to your head? This uh, person's a fucking psychopath. I want to okay, get away yeah, from him right exactly. now. Okay, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Imagine <laughs> dealing with that type of rejection. No, I'm just kidding. That's every not actually day. what I think. I know, but I'm saying imagine dealing with that type of, like, that label on you. Like, mm, all right, yeah, sure, whatever. Go get a real job. Like, mm. that shit. You got to be psychotic to break through. It's the people who did this shit every single fucking day. Mm. I, the minute I wake up and put my feet on the ground, before I even take a piss in the morning or brush my teeth, do anything, I'm listening to the records that was done the night before. Really? Dead ass. You got to be psychotic to be in the music industry and get to a certain level. You have to be crazy. Mm. That's why a lot of these artists and shit, they go crazy. Right. Because they are crazy. We are crazy. Mental health awareness. Think about it, bro. Like, in order to, to speak on music that changes people's lives, think of someone like as influential as Juice, right? Right. To speak on shit that heavy that make people like you, like he saved people from killing themselves. Mm. You have to, and able to put yourself in that vulnerable position, you have to be crazy. And as a producer, as an A and R, as an ex, an executive, you get caught up in the game. It, this industry shit will make you crazy. Mm. And I don't like the chop his own shit, whatever. But like people forget that in the, the day, like the shit you gotta overcome to really get here. It can make you crazy. Young Chop might be crazy, but he might be just the lunatic we're looking for. <laughs> you see, man, I'm, I'm putting some real shit down over here about mental health and my man. You, don't know you just want Billy more Joel. drama. No, yeah, you're right. You just want the drama. I don't want. I want, I want to see Young Chop do good. I'm trying to inspire a bunch of kids, bro. Yeah. No, me too. I want kids to be able to come from my situation or what the fuck I come from and be able to change their lives. And put on and work with their favorite artists and have their favorite artists. You know, it's crazy. I ran to Scott Storch once. A couple mm. times. I went, over to, I went over to his house. Scott Storch is like an idol to me, a legend, right? Mm. Ran to Scott Storch and I was like, bro, you're a legend, bro. And he's like, bro, you're a legend. Wow. Scott Storch told me that. I'll, I'll live with that forever in my life. Even if he meant, even if he didn't. But it's the fact that he knows who the fuck I am. That's why I do this shit. That crazy the shit. The respect. The respect, bro. Mm. Like, I don't, you can, I can make money and I could, I, I I made millions of dollars in this shit. I've spent millions of dollars in this shit. Mm. The money doesn't mean anything, bro. It's all about just, I like being able to add it to like the legacy and build it into something bigger. Mm. And I'm in a walking example for kids everywhere that it doesn't fucking matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you come from. My family is Joe Exotic's fucking that whole shit. That's my family. Like my family deals with like, they don't know how to read. There's people who drop down to first grade. I dropped down to fucking seventh grade, bro. And I made it here. Mm. And I'm in, I'm doing shit with you, podcast with you. Like I'm doing this shit right here. Like this is this alone is just like manifestation and me speaking shit in existence and building here. How many times I try to get an interview with you? Early on, but we we already did the exposed interview early on. Yeah, yeah, I, but I, still, I like, like those, bruh, but. go watch it. Watch the exposed video to then to now. Mm. Look at me, bro. I was 30, 40 pounds heavier. I was unhappy in my life. I got into shit. I took a bad deal to get in the industry. I was just trying to make some shake. Now I'm at a point where I'm cool. Like I'm, I'm taking shit I'm very passionate about, and I'm developing, playing them seeds, develop it into something that I'm really truly like happy with, and like you know. Every people get caught up in the little shit about like who I don't work with or do I work with or do, if I don't work with them or why. But the thing is like there's labels every day that drop artists every day mm. and they don't report on it. Whenever they don't work with an artist that fucks up or whatever, they don't. What happened with this artist? So why am I any different? I mean, that's the whole thing with you though is that most people in the industry are just not really like close enough to the underground. So then why don't people they look at that? They know they can get your attention. Okay, so then why, why don't why don't people look at the fact that I am that close? And appreciate me for the fact that, like, I am that close to the shit. And I am a normal person. And I do give people opportunity. And at the bottom of all this shit, me signing artists, where they work out, they don't, whatever. I was the one to give them opportunity. And I was the one to, like, tell some kid at some point, like, look, bro, if you just listen and we do everything that we got to do correctly, we, us, a team, build, you'll be able to change not your life, but your mom's life. You could, you know, like, their perception of you, whatever. You could start right now and do a whole new life for yourself. That's what I tell every single kid. Uh. And those who like, they let certain people get around them or certain people, like certain situations ruin them and shit. I can't be there to defend them every time. I'm just, I'm a 27 year old man. I got a five year old son. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like I got to make sure that 
I'm protecting myself and I don't want to get involved in situations that's going down for like, for what? Then I'm like everybody else in the industry. People mm -hmm. need to appreciate the fact that I care about kids enough to, to sit with them every day in the studio. Mm -hmm. People need to appreciate the fact that I care enough to tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing. Because there's a lot of people out here who take shit from artists and don't give artists the respect they're getting. The creative, there's people who literally rob artists of their creative percentage and tell them what they should do. And if they don't do it, they're standing on their percent and that's what it is. Mm. There's people, so I, 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 I contribute shit and I change shit and I just want to be respected like that. Mm. That's what it is. And that's the reason why I'm doing this shit. I don't do interviews. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the one thing about being sort of combative on Twitter is that regardless of what you're arguing about, it's like almost impossible not to sort of get a reputation of just being kind of like an argumentative, like crazy guy if you do that. Because I used to do that a lot too. Yeah. And it's like, no matter what, I used to like just respond to comments, just telling people to fuck off. And I yeah. like thought it was funny and stuff. And I would have people bring it up to me all the time. Like, you know, you're kind of like a dickhead to your fans. Yeah. Huh? And I'd be like, ah, oh, shit. Like, it's, it's just, it's, it's, you just don't know. Yeah, because you see just a computer, you don't see how it's affecting people, the shit you got to say right. or how they're taking it. You you, you don't they don't see how you're like saying it you mm -hmm. know what i mean there's a bunch of shit i feel like people just gotta understand that not everybody's built the same way bro everybody comes from a different background some people are dickheads i know and i'm very well self-aware that i'm a dickhead and i'm very diff difficult to work with mm. but like that's the reason why i'm as great as i am you know what i mean like a lawyer take a look a good lawyer not everybody's gonna like not everyone's supposed to like you if you're a good lawyer mm. there's gonna be people that hate you because you did what's best for your clients and your people that's what it is. Yeah. I'm yeah, in that it field. Comes with it. Yeah. But like, hey man, we're here. We're doing it. Taz Taylor, 2020. We're out here. Internet money. We out this bitch. On quarantine. On quarantine. Gloved up, masked up. Appreciate Adam took you, his man. shit off, but I'm not. I did. I took it off. Shout out to Jen. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> Finally did this, this bitch. Pokemon Go, level 40. Taz Taylor, no jumper. We out. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. No jumper.com. If you want support, go get yourself a Kandama. Pow. Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.